reincarnated as a fallen angel. One message to my readers. In preparation, Keguan please wait a moment, after the updates, you need to refresh the page to get the latest updates. One I am alive, waking up suddenly screaming, Alice looked around in a panic. The last thing she remembers is a devil-like creature ripping her wings off and killing her. Seeing that no one is around and that she is fine she tries to feel her wings. Instead of what should be there. She feels like a part of her body has been stolen, noticing that she no longer has wings. In fact, she doesn't remember having white skin or her hair being this long. Forcing herself to stay calm, Alice tries to think about the situation calmly. I don't seem to be hurt other than the fact I don't think this is my body standing now. She looks around finally realizing she's in an open field with nothing around except for a forest to the north and an ocean to the south. Suddenly a transparent window comes out of thin air saying, Quest. Kill 5 monsters reward, map skill kill monsters. With what my hands? And what is a quest? Where did this window come from? Alice had way more questions than she did answers. Thinking about everything calmly, she chose to try to complete the quest and headed to the north. Looking around for anything to use as a weapon, fearing what kind of monsters could be around, Alice found a very solid looking stick. I need to at least sharpen the end of this if I plan to use it to kill, rubbing the tip of the stick repeatedly with a jagged rock. She manages to sharpen the stick just enough to stab if she must duck cautiously searching the forest, she spots a green slime hopping around. To her surprise, she is able to see the name and level of the slime green slime, LVL2 charging forward as fast as she can, she lunges the makeshift spear at the slime, killing it instantly. She then sees a notification pop up quest, kill 5 monsters 1 5th ugh, just 4 more I guess she says to herself and begins searching for more slimes. Making good time, going deeper into the woods, she manages to find three moving her way. She rushes forward as fast as she can wanting to end things with one strike if possible. She lunges forward again, piercing through the first and stabbing the second killing both instantly. Swinging the spear around as if she knew exactly when to strike, she impaled the third slime mid-jump as it moved towards her quest, kill five monsters four-fifths one left to go. She says aloud to herself and pausing realizing how soft her voice sounds. Her normal voice was much crisper from all the yelling and shouting she would always do in her real body. Getting back on track, she spots the final slime and moves as quick as she can lunging forward once more as she finishes the quest. Quest complete. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Reward map skill learn skill y slash n? Yes. She says proudly and waits for something to happen. Moments later she starts to see a map. When she thinks of a map, it is small, just big enough to see her general area. Showing on the same kind of transparent window the quest showed up on, Alice couldn't help but think how convenient this skill was. Traveling deeper into the woods, another quest's pops up quest, find Rudham Kingdom reward, Rudham language skill Rudham Kingdom? I don't remember there ever being such a place. Where in the world am I? Alice questioned. Pausing and looking at the map, she could just barely make out what looked like the outer walls of a kingdom. While concentrating on that area a marker appeared and a faint light could be seen above the trees in that direction. Yup, very convenient. Who even put this, whatever it is, together? Picking up her pace she would kill slimes along the way until eventually she leveled up. Name, Alice Race, Fallen LVL, 2 HP, 25 slash 25 MP, 30 slash 30 STR, 12 VIT, 8 int, 9 dex, 13 def, 10 AGI, 18 skill points, the F is all this about. Stopping halfway to the kingdom. As an angel, she was a being blessed by God from birth. She had set stats and they only grew as she got older until she matured into an adult. Talent is what set all angels apart from each other as every angel was very strong. Realizing the ability to get stronger as she leveled, she wondered just how strong she could become. Can I get strong enough to take revenge on the devil who killed me? Alice began to smile thinking her situation might not be that bad. Resuming her sprint toward the kingdom, she decided to leave her skill points as they were, in case she needed them for later. Finally reaching the outer walls of the kingdom, the quest completion message displayed in front of her quest complete reward Rudham Kingdom language quest reach LVL 5 reward tier 1 weapon seeing this new quest only reminded her she was basically using a stick to kill monsters. For now, I'll just enter the kingdom and see if I can't find out any more information seeing two guards at the front gate, she discarded her stick and walked up to them. Hello, I just came from a long journey. May I enter the kingdom for some rest? She asked the two guards who looked at her a bit shocked. Is there something on my face? Alice wondered ahem, the first guard cleared his throat a little slightly blushing. 
Where did you come from and how long you plan on staying? He asked. I came from the other side of the forest. I just happened to see your kingdom's walls by luck. I've been traveling for days and I'm exhausted. Alice said, hoping to get in a bit easier with the excuse. Do you have your adventurer's ID with you? If not, I'll have to accompany you to the guild until one is made for you. No, sorry. I was robbed of all my belongings, so I have nothing. I had to use a stick to kill the slimes on my way here. She replied hoping to get a freebie. If that's the case then it should be fine. The guild has temporary lodging for beginners, if you'll follow me, I'll show you the way. The guard motioned for Alice to follow him. Two Adventures Guild. Entering the kingdom's outer gates, Alice's eyes widen as she sees multiple different races. A chance she never got when living in the Angel Kingdom, she was an elite warrior who was always kept within reach of the royalty. She rarely had the chance to see, let alone talk to other races. So, this was a welcome experience for her. The buildings were much different from what she was used to. They were humble and small, made from brick, and had a reddish color to them. While she could see much taller and grandiose buildings further into the kingdom, she was still pleasantly surprised to see how the other races lived. Thinking of races, she remembered hers as being fallen. Air. Guard, can I ask a question? Alice tried to think of a way to ask the guard about what was on her mind. My name is Adam, and you can ask whatever you need to know. He continued to lead her through the city. I'm just curious. I heard about a class called Fallen. Do you by chance know anything about that? Alice asked nervously Fallen is a rare class, it's one that you can't obtain unless you have a relation to the angel race. You probably won't have to worry about that. No one has seen a Fallen or an angel in quite some time. Adam answered as he stopped and turned towards Alice. We have arrived at the guild. If you go to the receptionist and inform her you were robbed, she can issue you a new ID, as well as, help you with any other questions. Adam stated before walking off. Walking in toward the receptionists, many of the adventurers stopped talking, and silently stared at the beautiful girl standing before them. Feeling the eyes on her, she felt uneasy as this was a first for her. She was a beautiful angel standing at 5 feet 8 inches. Short, blonde hair, blue eyes and a slender yet curvy body. While this body was at most 5 feet 4 inches, had long, gray hair, light purple eyes, and a petite body figure. Wondering what her face looked like she snapped out of her days hello. I just arrived in this kingdom, I was robbed of all my belongings. I am told that you can issue me a new ID and provide a temporary room for me. As the human receptionists looked up, she smiled and nodded her head. She grabbed the paperwork from below the counter before instructing her. I'll need you to fill this out. We just need the basic info, whether or not you need a civilian ID, and more details if you wish to become an adventurer to take on requests. What information do you need for the adventure ID? Alice asked politely. We will need to know your name, age, class, and level. A talent test will be given to see if you can survive in a battle as well as a magic aptitude test. Oh, by the way, my name is Jess. I can assume you would like the adventure paperwork. Jess asked with a smile. Yes. Please, she replied, taking the paperwork and filling it out. I wonder if I can lie about my class. I'd hate to cause more issues for myself by being known as a fallen. I also have no idea how old this body is name, Alice age, 17 class, swordswoman LVL, 2 turning in the paperwork. She wondered about the tests which were mentioned before. When does the talent test and magic test being? Alice asked, hoping Jess wouldn't pry into the class. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Since you're only LVL2, we can have that done in about an hour, when Matthew returns from his meeting. As for the magic aptitude, we can do that right now. The receptionist answered and began pulling a crystal the size of a watermelon out onto the table. Please place your hand onto the crystal and close your eyes, try to imagine the power within your body being pushed toward your hand and keep this up for about 30 seconds. Doing. As Jess asked. Alice placed her hand on the crystal and imagines all the power in her body being pushed into the palm of her hand. Oh, wow, a dual aptitude. One adventure said to another, as many more started to watch and whisper. Did Jess say that right? The brat over there has two elements, haha, who knows you're just drunk, said two men at a table nearby. Wind and shadow are your elements, said Jess with a slightly surprised look on her face. You're quite lucky normally people only have one element. Only about one in every 100,000 have two elements let alone the shadow element. I'm sure you'll make it pretty far as an adventurer. Jess said happily. I 
can pretty much guess what can be done with wind, but what about shadow? Alice asked wondering what use shadow could even be. The shadow element is great for sneak attacks, debuffs, self-buffs, and movement. A talented shadow mage can solo fight a boss monster if they know what they're doing responded Jess. Is there a place where I can learn about my elements and how to use them? I'd also like to know where I'm sleeping. Alice asked wanting to know more about magic seeing as she was a melee angel and not able to use magic in the past. Of course, there is the Mages Guild. You can join them as well and learn everything you need to know regarding magic there. It's the building directly across from this one if you would like to use this time to register with their guild. Thanks, I think I'll do that. Alice made her way to the Mages Guild wondering how to kill the hour she had since it only took 20 minutes to register at the Adventurer's Guild. Maybe I can learn a trick or two to help me with my talent test. I should also increase my int while I have the time. 3 Mages Guild Now that Alice gained a small boost in MP, she was ready to try to learn some magic. As she tried to open the doors to the Mages Guild, she phased through the front door and landed on her face. The door has magic in it to allow people to walk through the door without opening it. What? The F? Alice yelled out in surprise and anger. The other mages just looked at her and chuckled to which she glared at the rude people surrounding her. Are you alright? A young mage named Samuel appeared, offering his hand to her. I'm fine, but what is wrong with your door? Shouldn't there be a warning or something? Alice grabbed his hand accepting the gesture. We don't get many newcomers to the guild and most everyone in the kingdom is already aware of our door. If you knew you needed to come here, then someone should have warned you, said Samuel holding on to her hand a little longer than needed. Well, at least someone in this place is decent. I'm here to register to become a mage. I just found out my elements are wind and shadow, Alice told him. I'll have to pay Jess back for this door later, she thought to herself. Shadow, Samuel exclaimed getting the attention of others. That's amazing, you're the first shadow mage I've ever seen. Is being a shadow mage really all that great? She asked. That was quite the unexpected reaction, yes, it is. It's a very rare element. You will have no issues trying to join the mages guild having that element. Samuel stated bringing her to the front desk excitedly. Sarah, I've brought us a new mage who wants to join. Guess what her element is. Sigh, let me guess. Light. Sarah said looking unimpressed. Nope, the exact opposite. Samuel stated proudly as if it were his own element. I also have the wind element. Alice said, speaking up before they kept going on with their conversation. Both Samuel and Sarah stopped talking and stared at Alice waiting for her to tell them she's joking. What's with these people? Alice thought, I think we better test your elements here to be sure that you're telling the truth. Not that I don't trust you but having dual elements and having the shadow element is way too much. Sarah said pulling out a crystal a little bit smaller and smoother than the one at the Adventurer's Guild. You should already know what to do, so can you please place your hand on the crystal for me? Sarah instructed. Sure. Thing. Alice placed her hand on the crystal and began to focus as much power as she could into the palm of her hand. Seconds later. She felt different than the last time. She felt like power was really flowing out of her hand. Am I feeling like this because of the sudden increase to my int stat I gave before coming here? Alice wondered as she heard whispers when finally, she opened her eyes. Seeing not two but three colors brightly filling the crystal and everyone's jaws hitting the floor. Shadow, wind, and now fire sounds like fun. When can I learn? Alice asked happily well, well, young lady. You're the very first tri-element user this kingdom has ever seen an old man said. He was coming down a set of stairs while he spoke matter-of-factly to her. Who is this guy, she wondered. Let me introduce myself. My name is Albert and I am the master of this guild branch. May I ask what your name is young lady? My name is Alice I'm looking to join this guild to learn magic. Sarah, please be sure to process her paperwork. You don't have to worry about all the extra info just update her ID card. When you get a moment Alice, I'd like you to come and see me. Albert said ascending back up the stairs. Here, is your updated card. If you'd like I can have Samuel show you around. Sarah offered. Thank you that would help. Come, this way, I'll show you to the magic practice room. Samuel grabbed Alice's hand leading the way. Is, holding my hand necessary? Alice asked uncomfortably he's not bad looking, but I just don't feel comfortable with him dragging me around. Oh no. Sorry I was just excited, he stated, finally letting go of her hand. If we walk through this wall, we will be in the magic training room. Samuel said as he passed through the wall. Following his lead, 
She took a step and entered the room seeing an impossibly big room with targets placed everywhere. This is where you can train what you learn from either level skills or spell books I can demonstrate if you're curious about magic. Samuel spoke confidently. Yes, please do. What kind of magic do you, boom, fire, magic, he said smiling triumphantly as he managed to use a quick cast thanks to his wand blowing a target up. Normally, you would have to chant, but with certain high level staffs and wands you can quick cast a specific magic ability or spell without the need for a chant. That's amazing. She said honestly praising his ability. Can I try something? Sure, go for it but don't be upset if you can't do anything. You haven't even been trained in magic yet. Samuel said curious to see what she would do. Alice touched a target closing her eyes focusing all her power into her palm while imagining fire. A few moments later, the target busted into flames leaving Samuel dumbfounded. How? You didn't chant or even know a spell yet? Samuel asked. I felt the power during the crystal test so I thought of just focusing on fire as the element for the power. The next thing I knew the target was on fire, Alice said honestly. But anyways, I have to get back to the Adventurer's Guild. I still have my talent test to finish before I can be an adventurer. Sigh, I understand but please come back immediately after that, the Guild Master will really want to talk to you now after that display of genius. Samuel said adamantly. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Sure, I'll be sure to come back and talk to the old geezer. Alice said as she darted out of the room toward the front door. Four talent test with Aegean. Leaving the mages guild and heading across the street to the adventurers guild to take her test, Alice runs into a monstrous sized man Matthew, level, whoa there, little miss, are you okay? Where are you off to in such a hurry? Matthew crouches down lending her a hand up did his mother die during birth? How can someone be so big? Alice thought to herself taking his hand. My name is Alice. Sorry, I'm on my way to the guild to meet with you for my talent test. I did not want to be late as I spent a little longer at the mages guild than I wanted. Find. Authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Oh, well then you have great timing. I just returned from a meeting. Follow me and I'll take you to the testing room Matthew said as he stood back up and crouched down to enter the guild. Matthew had to be seven at least with short black hair and a well taken care of beard and muscles on every inch of his body. I wonder how high his level is for it to show up as question marks. Alice thought while following along. Entering the test room, Matthew stretched a bit informing Alice she could choose from any of the wooden weapons in the rack on the far wall to use during the test. The Test will consist of you doing your best to attack me and trying to either dodge my attacks, I'll hold back as much as I can, so I don't kill you in one hit. Keep in mind though it will hurt if you're hit since I have 56 levels on you Matthew said with a smirk, curious as to what weapon this small framed little girl would choose. Eyeing the weapons in the rack Alice decided to go with a short sword as well as a dagger for her offhand since a shield would prove useless against the beast she had to attack. A sword is probably best since I lied about my class and a dagger may prove useful if I can use it right. Alice thought to herself while walking onto the test area. I'm ready when you are. Feel free to before he could finish his sentence, Alice had already launched herself at full speed towards him trying to land an early blow in. What a feisty little one you are, Matthew said, grinning as he threw a light punch her way still having the power to knock her unconscious if landed. Narrowing her eyes giving this 120% of her concentration. She pulled the dagger out slashing at his wrist, and turning her body quickly using the momentum to swing her sword at his feet. It caused Matthew to jump back out of the way in surprise. It seems you've got some moves. Matthew said lunging back towards her, not giving her time to recover. Rolling to the side barely escaping his attack, Alice took advantage of his massive size grabbing onto his shirt as he passed her, swinging her body onto his shoulders and fixing the dagger at his throat. Seeing this, Matthew decided to put his hands up in defeat not expecting Alice to have this kind of battle power even when he was suppressing himself. You. Pass with flying colors, Alice. Where did you learn to fight like that? Matthew questioned with a smile on his face. Alice jumped down from his shoulders. Panting a bit from having used everything she had to get the upper hand with the limited stamina she had, Alice replied to the large man. I just moved the way my body wanted me to. I'm only a level 2 after all. The girl then thought to herself, if I was in my angel body, I could have killed you with one attack. Well that's some damn good instincts you have. Go inform Jess that you've passed, and you can be shown to your room and use the rest of the day however you want. 
Matthew said leaving the room 1 st I should have put some more points into decks I'm already worn out. Alice thought, making a mental note to do so in her next few levels. Matthew, told me to let you know that I've passed the test. Alice said with an exhausted face. Wonderful. Matthew isn't an easy opponent. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to your room so you can have a rest and shower. Jess said motioning for her to follow. What? Is a shower? Alice asked I'll show you once we get to your room. The Mages Guild just developed this as a way to conveniently bathe in privacy in the comfort of your own room. Jess said as if she's had to explain it 100 times before dot entering her room. She was slightly shocked at how nice it was, there was a nice bed, a window, a bathroom, and a closet. So luxurious. Alice thought, to use the shower, you step onto this pad and remove your clothes. You will have to insert around 10 MP points into this water stone and the water will start to fall like rain so you can wash yourself. Seeing how you were robbed I thought I'd give you a free bottle of shampoo and body soap so you can relax in style. Jess said with a wink. That sounds amazing thank you Alice said with delight. I'll leave you to it then. If you have any questions or needs, please feel free to let me know. Jess said before leaving her alone I should probably shower I smell like death. Alice thought with an excited expression that after enjoying her shower and feeling slightly drained from using 20 MP to take a longer shower, Alice laid on her new bed passing out before she even realized she was sleepy dot fighting a battle against an intruding enemy, Alice flew toward the castle after slaying numerous invaders. Observing all the chaos around her, she jumps into action to save a small child from being abducted by the unknown enemy. The arm of a powerful foe, dressed in black robes, using magic, and sheer power, he planned to take the Angel Kingdom by surprise. Are you okay? Where are your parents? Alice asked panicked to the little girl. I I I. Don't know mommy hid me in a cabinet when we heard all the fighting. My mommy and daddy ran off to help and they haven't come back. I'm scared. The little girl said crying in Alice's arms. Looking around for a safe space for the little girl to hide, Alice gets hit with a surprise attack, leaving her shocked. She dropped the little girl. Yelling for the little girl to run she gives her a small push in hopes of getting her to run and escape. As if time stopped, an arrow shot from behind her cuts her neck just barely not killing her as it sinks into the little girl's back. Watching the little girl fall dead, she feels her blood boil as she lets out a scream in horror and anger. Ah. Waking up in a cold sweat remembering some of the horrors that took place before her death she breathes heavily. I'm definitely going to take revenge, I will kill every last one of those bastards. Alice thought to herself. 5 Ignited Determination After finally getting some rest Alice headed downstairs to check if she could do any jobs to earn some money and level up. I won't be strong enough to slaughter those bastards if I just sit on my ass. Alice thought with a cold and murderous aura around her. Jess. I'd like to go kill some monsters to level up. Can I use a spare weapon and take a request flyer? Alice asked. Request flyers are able to be taken within your adventure rank. The ranks go from F E D C B A S S S. Sure, but your current adventure rank is only F right now. You will need to be level 5 and complete 2 requests to rank up to take E requests. Jess said with a worried look, seeing the look Alice had in her eyes. That's fine, I'll take the request for slime killing, and the request for gathering low rank medicinal herbs since they're both in the same location. Stated Alice, not wanting to waste any time. I'll approve your taking of the requests. Which weapon would you like to use? You'll have to return it once you return or you'll be charged for the price of the weapon. Jess said as she pointed to some of the weapons on the wall behind her. A sword and a dagger please. Alice asked waiting patiently. If you'll just sign this contract for the weapons, you'll be all set and can be on your way Jess said giving her the papers. Leaving the kingdom gates Alice rushed towards the forest spotting a group of slimes in no time at all. Throwing the dagger with great accuracy they instantly killed one of the slimes and made her way through the others with easy. Picking up the dagger alive thought to herself, this is much quicker with actual weapons. I need to hit level 5 ASAP continuing her quest to level up before she gathered the herbs, Alice made quick work of the slimes in the area. Pausing to take a rest she decided to check her status noticing she leveled up twice in the few hours she been at it. Name, Alice class, fallen HP, 50 slash 50 MP, 40 slash 40 level, 4 STR, 13 16 VIT, 10 13 int, 11 DAX, 13 16 find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Def, 10 11 AGI, 18 skill points. 10-0 great. I only have one more level, 
Then I'll complete the system quest and gain a weapon of my own. Alice thought with a smile. Coming into a clearing, she could see the herbs she is supposed to gather. Not wasting this opportunity, she gathered all the herbs. Wishing she had more space to store things so she could take extra. A new window appeared inventory unspecified currency, 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 and this surprised her so she tapped one of the boxes. A question appeared on store low rank herbs Y slash N? Yes. Alice said not knowing what to expect as all the herbs she gathered disappeared from her bag and appeared in the inventory inventory black small square unspecified currency 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 on x15 low grade herbs stored closing out the window she once again praised the convenience provided to her somehow. Gathering and storing 20 more herbs, she looked up only to see a little green creature goblin, LVL5 seeing Alice, it started to run toward her with a dagger in hand clearly with the intent to kill. Not giving the situation a second thought, she picked up her sword and threw the dagger at the goblin's face. Titching the goblin parried the dagger only to be stabbed through by Alice's sword. Well, that was easy. Poor. Stupid creature she thought to herself as she gathered her dagger and taking it from the goblin's body, storing it in her inventory to inspect later. A new screen appearing before her slightly caught her off guard. Damn system she cursed under her breath quest complete reward, weapon sword dagger rapier scythe claymore seeing the selection before her a sword would be good since that's what I'm currently using but the same goes for the dagger. I could probably make good use of a rapier, but I've never tried it before. I've also never used a scythe but it looks like I could take multiple enemies down with one swing pretty interesting. While I have the strength required for a claymore, I'm a little small to wield it taking all aspects into consideration Alice used her finger to select the scythe as to kill more enemies fast. Materializing from thin air, a grim looking scythe appeared into her hands. It had a long slightly curved staff with the end of it having a long dark and beautifully curved blade scythe of revenge growth type weapon plus 10 str plus 10 dex plus 5 vit seeing her weapon and the bonus stats. She let out a little squeal of excitement. Growth type weapons are crazy rare. Even the angel race blessed by God only had two of these kinds of weapons. Storing her sword and dagger, she decided to use her new scythe to test out her compatibility with it. Swinging it around and twirling it in her fingers felt oddly natural. Oh, right I must have leveled up to 5. Status name, Alice class, fallen HP, 60 60ths, 85 85ths, MP, 50 slash 50 level, 5 str. 16 plus 10 vit, 13 15 plus 5 int, 11 13 dex, 16 17 plus 10 def, 11 agi, 18 skill points, 5 0 feeling as though she got a massive power spike, she decided to hunt down another goblin to test the power of her new weapon and stats. Dashing through trees, swinging the scythe around, using its weight to carry her up further when she jumped, she made amazing time in locating a group of three goblins. Launching herself off a tree, Alice spun her body quickly slashing a wide area leaving behind an after image of her weapon's path. As soon as the goblins noticed her and turned their heads to see her, their heads rolled off their shoulders as their bodies collapsed, trying her best to avoid most of the blood splatter caused by her devastating attack. She looted the goblins, storing one short bow, 32 arrows, another dagger, and a short sword. Today has been pretty productive. I should head back and turn in the requests. It'll be a good idea to store my scythe and walk back with the weapons I came here with. Alice thought with caution. Returning back to the Adventures Guild, she handed in the herbs and showed her ID card since they record every monster you kill. Wow, good work. You even killed a few goblins and made it to level 5. Jess said with wonder as most people don't level up so fast. Handing Alice her reward of one small silver for the herbs and 90 copper pieces for killing the slimes, Jess asked, So will you be returning the weapons, or do you wish to buy them? I'll be returning the weapons since the goblins dropped theirs when I butchered them Alice said with a blank expression what an odd way to refer to that. Jess thought as she took the weapons back. Thank you for lending them to me. I'd also like to update my ID card, seeing as I'm level 5 and have completed two requests. Alice said, pretty happy about ranking up in a day. Sure, I'll just update your rank and you can take E rank requests from now on. To rank up to D you need to be level 10 and complete 5 requests as well as take another talent test to see how you've progressed. 
Jess said handing Alice her ID back. Okay, thank you. I'm going to get some rest and meet the old man at the Mage's Guild tomorrow, see ya. Alice said rushing off to her room. 6 Using the Shadow Element Waking up from a much needed night of sleep, Alice went out to the Kingdom's Market to see if she could sell the goblin weapons and remaining herbs. Walking through various stalls, she finally found a weapon shop. Entering the shop, she was greeted by a half-wolf, half-human girl that couldn't have been older than 25. She had silver hair with cat-like ears poking out and a fluffy long tail. Hiya welcome to my weapon shop. I'm Yumi, what can I do for ya cutie? Feeling excited to be able to talk to another demi-human she began to show the merchant her items. I have some weapons I looted off some goblins I killed, and I'd like to try to sell them as well as buy some armor if possible. Alice said with a smile. She took the two daggers and short sword out of her inventory, keeping the bow in case she wanted to use it for later. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Whoa how rare to have a storage skill. I can give you 2 silver per dagger and 4 silver for the short sword, so 8 silver all together. Oh, and I'll give you a discount on the armor you want, so feel free to look at my wares. Yumi said giving Alice a playful wink. Looking around at the different armor sets Yumi had, skipping past the heavy armor as it wasn't a good fit for her. She finally, after some time, came across an interesting set that caught her eyes shadow chest plate plus 5 def shadow cloak plus 5 inch shadow gloves plus 5 dex shadow boots plus 5 agi yumi, how much for this shadow set? Alice asked since this set matched her perfectly. Hmm, I'll sell it to you for 9 silver. Normally it would be 15, but I want you to only come to my shop in the future for your weapon and armor needs. If you can promise me that then I'll sell it for 9 silver. Yumi said trying to rope in a cute new customer that she'd get to see more of and make a profit on since she got the set for free from a dead body she found in her travels hmm. I'll have only a few copper coins left if I buy it, but I can still sell the herbs I have and there's always the option to go and kill more monsters as well as more requests she can take. Alice thought agreeing with her terms. Deal. I promise I'll use you for all my armor and weapon needs in the future. Walking. Up to the counter with the armor set. She hands Yumi the 9 silver coins she had. Do you have a room I can use to try the armor on? Alice asks hoping to make use of the stat boost as soon as she can. Sure, if you go into the back there is a storage room you can use. Just let me know if you need the armor adjusted. Yumi happily replies. Being in front of a mirror for the first time, she is slightly shocked at how she looks. Alice knew she had a nice figure, but she didn't expect her beautiful light purple eyes, as well as her full soft pink lips. Her hair was long and light gray. I can see why people stare now. Alice though to herself while changing into her new armor, keeping her tight-fitting black leather pants on. She quite admired this look, and the armor fit perfectly. Walking back to the front of the store, Yumi, who had turned her head hearing that Alice had returned, dropped the shield she was hanging on to her foot. Gah. Yumi yelped out in pain. Sorry? I just didn't expect you to look so good in the armor set. Yumi said drooling a bit half from pain half from attraction. No. Problem. You should sit down and tend to your foot. I have to go meet an old geezer at the Mages Guild Alice said as she left the store happy with her purchase. Moving slightly faster than before she smirked wondering how fast she would be if she invested her next level up into the AGI stat. Walking through the tricky front door of the Mages Guild, she ran up to Sarah at the receptionist counter. Hi I'm here to see the old geezer. Alice said still happy from her stat boost and her new armor. Sarah, trying not to stare too much, looks toward the stairs. If you go up the stairs, Albert is there and expecting you thanks replied Alice darting up the stairs. I'm here as I said I would be, old man Alice stated looking around for the old man not seeing him. Maybe Sarah didn't see him leave. She thought. I've been expecting you, young lady. It's rude to make people wait you know. Albert said from above floating in the air near the bookshelf, reading. Sorry. To make you wait. I wanted to level up and get some new armor before I came. Alice said while looking up. Will I be able to fly again with magic? Alice wondered feeling a little sad since she missed having her wings. Here. Catch this, I managed to find a grimoire for shadow users. It'll prove very useful for you, and since you're the only shadow user we have, you can just keep the book, just make sure to take care of it. Albert said as he tossed her the pitch black grimoire. Before she could touch the grimoire, it floated above her hands, looked at the old man pouting, she lowered her hands back down. To her surprise, the grimoire followed her hands and began to open. The pages flipped around quickly giving off a black aura making it seem like the pages were shapeless. It. 
Seems the grimoire already recognizes you as its owner, probably since you're the only shadow user to touch it in a hundred years. Albert said already expecting this to happen. We can talk later, I just wanted to give you this. You should head to the practice room. The grimoire will naturally bring out your element and you should be able to read the spells. Just think of an attack or buff etc and the grimoire will automatically flip to the page best suited to what you want. He said as he snapped his fingers and she appeared by Sarah in a flash. A-H-H. Sarah jumped back as Alice appeared from thin air in front of her. Curse you old man you are going to kill me if you keep doing that. She shouted towards the stairs. I'd like to use the training room to test out the grimoire. Looking. Down at her hands she realized the grimoire was gone. If he gave you a grimoire you just have to think of it being in your hands and it'll show itself. As for the training room, you should already know where it is, so feel free to use it as long as you'd like. Sarah said as she put her head in her hands still trying to compose herself. Thinking of the grimoire, as instructed, it really did appear in her hands. Since she has the damage already, she thought of a movement, buff, or skill, wondering if the grimoire had a skill like that. Reading what Alice wanted. The grimoire flipped towards the end of the book showing a skill that will allow her to sink into the shadows near her and appear in a shadow she can see a further distance out from. As if she already learned the skill, she sunk into the shadow of the target next to her as if she was below the ground. She could see little shadow orbs floating all over the place. Concentrating on one, she changed places with it instantly and rose from the shadow across the room from where she had been standing. Taken back by the usefulness of this skill she put the grimoire away to see if she could use it without having the book out. She instantly appeared in the place she started. This is freaking amazing. I'll be able to take on more monsters and kill them so much faster with this skill. Alice thought with a victorious smile. 7A insane new combat style. Eagerly looking at the request board she takes three requests. Subjugate 10 goblins, subjugate goblin leader, subjugate low level bandits. Pulling the 3E rank requests off the board Alice rushes to the counter where Jess is in hopes of setting out as soon as possible. Looking up and seeing Alice bringing three requests to her she raises an eyebrow. You want to do all three of these at once? Jess asks while reading over the three papers. Yes. They're within my rank and my armor set gives me a stat boost so it should be quick work. I have already killed four goblins and they didn't give me a fight at all. Alice says proudly waiting for them to be accepted so she can rush to try out some combos she's been thinking about. The goblins should be no problem, but a goblin leader is level 7 and much stronger. Not to mention the bandit request is for a party of 3E e ranks not a singular level 1 so I'm afraid I can't allow the last request but the other two I shall let you have. Jess said sternly halfway guessing that Alice is probably stubborn I guess I can just kill the bandits anyway and loot them then turn in the proof, what's the worst the guild will do to me? Alice pondered but accepted her terms on the surface. Will. You be needing the sword and dagger again for this. Jess asked not seeing any trace of a weapon on Alice. No that's alright I'll go buy one from you me. Alice responded not exactly lying to her. Okay. Fine but be safe and don't take on more than you can handle. Jess said in warning seeing Alice already halfway out the door. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Testing out her AGI boost even though small proved to be faster by a noticeable margin putting strength into he legs she jumped as high as she could clearing a small house landing inside a shadow before exiting the shadow closet to the guards at the front gate. Seeing the cloaked girl seeming appear from thin air beside him Adam jumped back in surprises. Alice was it? Please refrain from doing whatever it is you just did I almost attacked you. Giving her a stern warning it was almost too late as she was already almost out of sight before he realized that slowing down to conserve energy and let her stamina build back up she entered the woods remembering where she remembered seeing the goblins. When randomly a quest popped up quest, kill 25 monsters reward, 20 silver, title the system can give money out as well. I wonder what other surprises you'll show me, she said to herself as she approached four goblins eating. Pulling her scythe from her inventory she rushed forward swing the scythe in hopes to kill all four in one go. But to her surprise one goblin managed to duck in time seeing the lethal attack coming. Still managing to one shot three out of the four she composed herself as she dashed forward again. The goblin dodging a second time managed to let out a yell before falling victim to Alice's third strike annoying bastard that yell was to probably call for help she thought as she looted the four goblins. Standing back up she barely had enough time to react as an arrow flew from the tree cover whistling by Alice's ear. 
Had she been any slower she might have died, locating the goblin she sunk into the shadows leaving the goblin to panic wondering where she went. Before the goblin who shot at her had time to flee Alice came out of the shadows nearby decapitating him before he could turn and see her. Well this skill has already paid off it takes about 5 MP per second to use this skill so I need to get faster at it in case I need to escape or I'm low on mana having killed 5 25ths of the goblins Alice was happy to see she leveled up again. Name, Alice class, fallen HP. 65 65 90 90 MP, 65 65 90 90 Level, 6 STR, 16 17 plus 10 VIT, 15 plus 5 int, 13 15 plus 5 DAX, 17, plus 10 plus 5, DAF, 11 plus 5 AGI, 18 20 plus 5 skill points, 5 0 putting some points into her int and her equipment boosts put her HP and MP both, at 90, Seeing this she felt more confident about fighting the bandits later. Deciding to end her rest she continued hunting goblins while she looked for the goblin leader. Using her shadow skill along with her scythe she made quick work out of all the goblins she came across till she finally spotted the goblin leader who was surrounded by five more regular goblins. Goblin leader, LVL7 The goblin leader was much taller than the other goblins who were only about three to begin with as well regular goblins only had a dagger a sword or a bow, while the leader was about five. Equipped with a sturdy looking shield and a long sword that charging forward at great speed she lopped two of the goblins heads off in one swing while the other two and the leader faced her. The two smaller goblins charged forward hoping to kill Alice to please their leader, however they failed miserably as they were easy targets freely coming to be slaughtered by Alice's scythe. Seeing that the only one left was the goblin leader she ran to his right disappearing into a shadow cast by a tree. Not being able to find Alice the goblin leader let out a yell as if to taunt Alice for being a coward. Reappearing to his left from another shadow the leader sensed danger and put his shield up deflecting her strike. Just as soon as he did Alice disappeared once again and came from above this time while launching herself towards the leader from above the gave the scythe a wide downward swing as she did a front flip not being able to defend the leader stood shocked not able to move as his body slowly split in half the leader was a lot more difficult than the regular goblins Ugga used up so much. MP just to kill him without taking a hit myself Alice thought looking at her MP being drained down to half. Avoiding the pools of blood she looted the goblins around the area that she killed and decided to take a break. Luckily killing all those goblins gave her another level up, jumping up onto a tree limb she sat back and relaxed as she looked at her status. Name, Alice class, fallen HP, 70 70 95 95 MP, 85 85 110 slash 110, level, 7 STR. 17 19 plus 10 VIT, 15 plus 5 int, 15 18 plus 5 DAX, 17, plus 10 plus 5, DEF, 11 plus 5 AGI, 20 plus 5 skill points, 5 0 putting plus 2 into STR so she can hit harder and plus 3 into int so she can use her skills more Alice felt satisfied. I wonder how many more monsters I have to kill till I finish my quest Alice thought as she said quest aloud seeing the window pop up quest. Kill 25 monsters 24 25ths reward, 20 silver, title walking around the forest trying to find the last monster Alice happened to see some shady looking men camped out, curious as to if they were the bandits she used shadow movement to perch herself on a tree limb above them. While listening to them talk she learned that they were the bandits from the request and apparently they had captured a magic beast egg. 8. Bandit Camp Hearing the men talk about the beast egg piqued Alice's interest, Magical beats are able to become a pet through a blood contract. The beasts can level up and gain abilities the same as their masters, in some cases they can even share abilities and communicate with their masters via telepathy how the hell did these low level bandits come across something this valuable Alice thought to herself while planning out a strategy to kill the bandits and take the egg for herself. Leaning over the branch falling gracefully she lands beside the two bandits taking them both by surprise. Hey there cutie where did you come from don't you know it's dangerous to be out here all alone, why don't you come with me and my brother here we will take real good care of you ha 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 said the bandit with clear motives to take advantage of her. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Che what scum, Alice says under her breath while taking her scythe. Seeing Alice bring out her weapon both men scrambled to take out their swords, even if Alice herself doesn't look intimidating anyone would freak out seeing someone bear a hulking evil looking scythe at them. Pathetic Alice said coldly as she swung her scythe as hard as she could, 
cutting both men in half. Picking up the two swords and other things of value from the two men's bodies, Alice leaped up to the nearest tree, jumping from tree to tree, looking for the rest of the bandits in hopes of finding them before they can do anything with the beast egg. Coming into a clearing, she finally sees the bandit camp. 1, 2, 4, 8, 13, 24. Che, why are there so many bandits? No wonder this is a E rank party request. Luckily their levels are all around 7 with the highest level being their leader at level 9. Maybe if I just use my shadow movement I can kill them quick enough to keep my position hidden long enough to kill the majority of them before I actually have to fight. Alice thought to herself giving a lot of thought into her plan of action since she was not about to abandon this opportunity unless she absolutely had to. Obtaining a loyal ally this early on would make things much easier. Using her shadow skill, she moved to a tent close by without being seen. Knowing that the scythe was big and caused a bloody mess when she killed with it, she chose to use one of the daggers she previously looted until she was found out to make things more quiet and effective. Moving at full speed, she ran by one of the bandits, quickly cutting his throat before he had a moment to react. He fell to the ground, bleeding out. Unfortunately, catching the attention of another bandit, she hid herself behind a crate. Paul if you're going to fucking take a nap take it in a tent why the hell are you laying on the ground? Another bandit said slowly approaching the falling bandit. Hearing this Alice took the opportunity to act and launched herself at the bandit as fast as she could. Seeing a figure come out of nowhere at him the bandit yelled intruder before having his throat cut as well well this ruins my plan of being sneaky. Damn I still have 22 more to kill before I can search for the egg. Alice thought to herself before jumping back into the trees to observe what happens. Seeing eight more bandits rush to see what happened they called out boss two of our men have been killed looking in the direction he called Alice could see the leader and four more bandits jogging to the scene. Taking out the bow and notching an arrow Alice aimed at the leader hoping to land a head shot so she wouldn't have to fight him later being two levels under him. Waiting until he was standing still above the two bodies she fired the arrow. Deciding against staying to see if it hits Alice enters the shadows and moves to another tree a little further to the left. Exiting the shadow she see that the arrow managed to hit him in the right shoulder. Find. The assassin they must be after the beast egg. The leader shouted in pain as the bandit quickly spread out running to the woods where she is while leaving the leader behind. Watching the leader make his way back to his tent Alice knew she couldn't miss this opportunity and she acted fast. Quickly using her shadow movement she rushed towards the leader while he was injured and had his back turned. Putting her bow away she took out her scythe and swung as fast as she could hoping to end him as quietly as possible to have more time before she was noticed by the other bandits. Sensing danger the leader ducked and rolled forward drawing his sword as he landed and turned to face Alice. Why don't you just lay down your life and give me the egg and it'll be on my way. I'll even let your friends live she taunting him since she could no longer end things quickly. Charging at her swinging his sword Alice jumped back returning the attack and parrying his strike. Lunging forward she uses the small end of her scythe and jams it into his stomach knocking the wind out from him. Following up he attacks she roundhouse kicks the side of his head sending him rolling. Pulling a dagger from her inventory she throws it at him while disappears into a shadow and reappearing from the shadow cast by the tent behind him as she swung her scythe down impaling him between the shoulder and head as the blade easily went though his neck down into his body killing him instantly. This would have been much harder if he wasn't injured and had more experience Alice thought to herself thankful at the relative ease of this battle. Causing her victory to be short-lived she heard more of the bandits headed her way. Running towards the three bandits coming her way she swung her scythe with as much power as he could as the blade cut through two men and being stopped by the shield of the last. Moving back the two locked eyes with each other. Are you here for the egg? The bandit asked clamly. I.D. Prefer to end the day not having to fight the rest of you for now if possible. Alice replied wondering what the bandit was up to but deciding to hear him out as she still had no idea where the egg actually was. I know I can't defeat you and while the rest of us together might manage to kill you, most of us would probably still die considering you're a shadow mage on top of having great combat experience. It'll show you to the egg so long as you leave here and not return. I am next in line to be leader so naturally I benefit from losing the egg in exchange for my life. The bandit said with a serious look in his eyes. I'll. Agree to that but you'll have to bring the egg to me, I'd rather not walk into a ambush. I'll keep my weapon out and hide in the tent behind me. Since you know I'm a shadow mage you know that trying to ambush me in a tent will not work, come back when you have the egg. It'll give you five minutes. Throwing him a bag she waited to see what the bandit would do. Picking the bag up and putting his sword away he turned and casually walked away headed to the biggest tent in the area. I wonder how long it's been, I'm growing impatient. Alice thought considering just killing them all. 
Alice thought but decided against it and to wait longer since she only managed to kill five of them so far. A few moments later the bandit walked into the tent with no weapons on him and the bag. As you requested the egg is in the bag you can inspect it if you would like. But as soon as you verify it you should leave the bandits will see the leader dead soon and all hell will break loose. He said handing Alice the bag he really came through I guess. Alice thought as she opened the bag clearly seeing the beast egg. Since you kept your world I'll keep mine. You should also move out of this forest there is a request at the guild to wipe you all out. Alice said as she disappeared into the shadow and reappearing in the shadow of a tree just outside of camp. Storing the egg in her inventory Alice made her way away from the bandits and back to the goblin area so she could finish up her system quest. 9 Little Shadow Making it safely away from the bandit territory Alice walked up to a small pond to take a drink of water. Leaning down cupping her hands in the crystal clear cool water she took a refreshing drink of water and sat under the shade of a tree to cool off. Pulling the bag with the egg in it out of her inventory she grabbed onto it gently to get a closer look at it shadow panther egg form blood contract y slash and yes Alice said calmly curious as to what would happen. Setting the egg on the grass Alice sat with her legs crossed leaning forward waiting. The egg slowly started to crack. After a moment a small cat exited the egg and looked at Alice. The small cat had onyx black silky fur piercing blue eyes, and a tail about the length of its body dot letting out a small naaaaa opening its mouth as much as it could as if to yawn. Cute. Alice thought as she reached her hand slowly out gently petting its head. Suddenly and rather violently the shadow panther cub bit down on Alice's right causing her to jerk her hand back in pain. You. Little prick the hell did I ever do to you? Alice said angrily when a new message appeared blood contract started name the shadow panther? Thinking for a bit and forgiving the little guy for his violent outburst she pet him again this time a bit cautiously. I think I'll call you Little Shadow, Alice said, purr could be heard. I guess you like the name huh? Named Pet, Little Shadow Blood Contract Complete Little Shadow, Level 1 Find Authorized Novels in Web Novel Faster Updates, Better Experience Please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. HP 40 slash 40 MP 40 slash 40 Well aren't you lucky? You're just born and already have almost half my HP and MP. Shall we go hunt a bit and level up Little Shadow? Alice asked getting a rawr from Little Shadow with a confident look. Petting him one last time Alice gets back up and lightly jogs so her new friend can keep up. Seeing the slimes she first started with when she woke up in this new body she smiled as she made her way to them. Lightly licking the slime she asked Shadow to attack it so he could gain the experience. Taking the opportunity to impress his new owner Shadow pounced onto the slime digging its sharp claws into the slime and biting down the slime slowly struggled and died. Good job Shadow now let's keep this up. Alice said proudly seeing the quest completion window appear quest complete reward 20 silver title, hunter title bonus, eagle eye, plus 10 agi plus 5 vit plus def wow that's quite the boost. Alice said to herself as she looked to see where Shadow was. Not seeing him she yelled out little Shadow come back where did you go? Worriedly. Hearing a rustling coming from the trees to her left she looked to see Shadow casually walk out carrying a level 2 slime in his mouth. Even more surprising Shadow had gone off and leveled himself up little Shadow. Level 2 HP 50 slash 50 MP 50 slash 50 freaking brat get 10 points to HP and MP each level while I only get 5. She thought with a bit of jealousy. I guess there is a reason you're a magical beast Alice told herself to feel a little better about it. Dropping his kill and running to his master's side he pawed at her leg wanting to be held and praised for his kill and hard work. Nya nya yeah yeah you did a good job Alice said somehow knowing what Shadow wanted as she picked him up to pet him. Let's keep going though I wanna get you leveled up once more so you can try to help me with some goblins I'd like to hit level 8 before we head back to the kingdom. Alice said as Shadow leaped out of her arms running to the right knowing where the next slime was. Alice ran alongside Shadow as he made quick work of a few slimes as he finally hit level 3. Good job Shadow, ready for a bigger challenge. Alice asked Rhea or he replied eagerly how cute, locating three goblins with the help of her title kill eagle eye which allowed her to see further for a short duration. Alice took out her scythe killing one easily as Shadow distracted the other two using his agility to run circles around them slowly clawing and whittling away at their HP. Looking at the sight she crept up on the distracted goblin decapitated both of them with one swing of her scythe leveling up in the process. Good. Job Shadow I'll loot these guys and you can keep watch while I adjust my stats. Alice said petting his head. Name, Alice class, fallen HP, 100 slash 100, 125 slash 125, MP. 95 95 120 slash 20 level 8 str 1922 plus 10 vit 15 plus 5 int 1820 plus 5 dex 
17, plus 10 plus 5, death, 11, plus 5 plus 10, AGI, 20, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 5-0 getting her status updated with no issues she looked around to see Shadow busy playing around in the grass attacking and chasing whatever bug he finds. Okay okay enough play time, let's head back to the kingdom I've got quite a bit of loot to offload and I want to learn some more magic. Alice said as she picked Shadow up and ran full speed back to the kingdom occasionally using Shadow movement to gain distance reducing the time it took to get back to the kingdom greatly. Hiya. Adam, I managed to get my hands on a pet we have a blood contract is it okay if he comes into the kingdom with me? She asked not knowing if it was allowed while putting on a slight pout to try and sway him. Eh. Where in the world did you get a magic beast Alice? There shouldn't be a problem you'll just have to register it at the guild. He answered kind of shocked that a magic beast would appear so close to the kingdom. Thanks. I'll do just that. Come on Shadow let's go. Alice said joyfully as she took off towards the guild to hurry and register her new ally. 10 Shopping in the Kingdom Arriving at the Adventures Guild Alice happily makes her way up the receptionist's desk to register Little Shadow. Um, Alice are you okay? And when did you get a cat? Jess asked with concern seeing blood splattered on her armor and face. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine, why do you ask? And this is Little Shadow I managed to complete all my requests and I even killed the bandit leader? That's how I got this little guy he is a magical beast and I have a blood contract with him so I need to have him registered. Alice said joyfully, oh, right I almost forgot about the blood I did a lot of hunting and ran into some trouble, sorry I'll go wash up after we are finished. You, killed the leader alone? I told you that was a party request stupid girl you could have been killed. Jess said a little louder than she meant to garnering some stares toward Alice which she ignored. Yeah, I know but I didn't manage to kill all the bandits just like six of them plus the leader I had to bail or I might really have died, Alice said calmly still smiling happily about today's progress. Sigh. I guess there's no helping it now, let me see your ID card so I can verify the kills so I can give you the rewards. I won't be able to give you a full reward for the bandits but I can probably pay you something for taking out the leader and a handful of the bandits. Jess said giving in. Sure. Thing. Alice said handing over the card to Jess. 12 slimes, 34 goblins, and 7 bandits is what her kill count for the day showed. Handing Alice her card back I've registered Little Shadow as your pet. The reward for the goblins will be 17 silver, for the goblin leader it's 32 silver, and I can give you 60 silver which is half the original reward for the bandits since you took out the leader of the camp which means they will probably move somewhere else. Jess said handing Alice 109 silver. Also, in case you didn't know in this kingdom 100 copper is equal to 1 silver, and 1000 silver is equal to 1 gold, while 10,000 gold is equal to 1 holy coin. Jess informed Alice as she was running up to her room. Taking her armor off, Alice didn't realize how much she looked forward to taking a shower. Inserting 30 MP into the water stone, she planned to take a nice long relaxing shower. Finishing up her shower, she got to cleaning her armor and washing off all the blood. Walking to the closet, she realized she really has nothing to wear except her armor. Blah, I really need something to just wear around the town. I've still got a ton of stuff to sell to Yumi, so maybe I'll go shopping later. Pudding. Her armor in her closet she put the shirt she woke up in back on and tied up her hair as she ran out the door telling Shadow to come underscore 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 how have you been? Miss me. Alice said playfully. Of course I have cutie, what V you got for me today? Asked Yumi curiously. Pulling all the weapons and armor pieces, she looted off her hunt today out of her inventory, which only had one space left. Yumi couldn't believe she looted all this in a day at such a level. M. I'll buy it all off you for 80 silver coins. Will you be needing to buy anything today? Yumi asked. I still have a weapon I managed to loot that I plan to use, but I do plan on going shopping for more outfits after this. Alice replied wondering if she should buy a weapon anyways, now that she had 180 silver and some copper change. Oh, that sounds super fun. I close up shop in like 10 minutes mind some company. Yumi asked as she just imagined seeing how cute and sexy Alice would be wearing some of the clothes and underwear sold in the kingdom. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Finishing closing Yumi caught up to Alice who was waiting by the water fountain in the middle of the business district. Hey did I take too long? I'm sorry if you got bored. Yumi said hoping she didn't make Alice wait for longer than she wanted. No, not at all, you do you girl. 
So where are we going first Miss Local? Alice said since she didn't know what shops had good clothes. Julia's fashion empire has some great looking clothes they're all the craze right now, let's start there. Yumi suggested as she grabbed Alice's hand leading her through the crowded street to the shop. Felling people stare at them Alice felt kind of uncomfortable she could feel some of the thoughts some of the men they passed by oh my, this store is huge and the clothes are all so cute. Alice thought to herself as Yumi took the lead grabbing everything she thought would look good on Alice, eventually making their way to the underwear section if the store Yumi turned to look Alice in the eyes with a serious look. I've noticed for a while now but you don't wear anything do you? Alice's face glowing red that's none of your business I have what I need. Upon hearing this and seeing Alice's face well this is my treat so you have no choice it's payback for not buying a weapon from me yet. She said sternly hoping that Alice would agree away. Fine just one set. I'll come back for more later by myself, said Alice embarrassed. This one time will hold me over for a while, Yumi said chuckling lightly. Settling with a purple lace push-up and a matching pair of panties, they headed to the dressing room to try on everything Yumi selected. That was more fun than I thought it would be, Alice said wearing one of the new outfits she purchased. A black and white dress with frills and a low-cut, fishnets, and some new flats. Da this is a must for stress relief after a long day's work plus you look H.O.T. Yumi said spelling out the word rather than saying it which only embarrassed Alice more. Storing away the bags of other clothes, Yumi was once again leading Alice around the town visiting different stalls, buying jewelry and sweets till dark. Thanks for letting me tag along I had a lot of fun on our date, said Yumi with a playful wink. Can you stop already, you were the one who dragged me along so I guess you're welcome, Alice said letting out a laugh. Anyways I'm going back to my room to get some sleep me and Shadow had a very eventful day today and I can't wait to sleep. Make sure to come to see me again soon, Yumi said waving as she headed back to her shop. Finally making it back home Alice hung up her new clothes and fell back onto her bed while Shadow jumped onto the bed laying down beside her. Softly petting her Alice slowly fell asleep. 11 Magic Basics Waking up feeling rejuvenated, Alice got dressed in one of her new dresses. Another frilly black dress that came about knee length and sympathizes her figure in certain key places. Feeling satisfied with how she looked, she set out to the Mages Guild to learn some more magic, knowing it could prove very useful in battle. Hiya. Sarah, I'm here to see about learning some fire and wind magic to increase my overall battle capabilities. Is there anything I can do or an instructor available to help me? Alice asked casually, walking up to the front desk. Hmm. Which element are you wanting to learn about? You're on your own when it comes to the shadow element though unfortunately, Sarah answered back. Hmm. Let's start with fire, I need a long distance damage ability so I can have more options when fighting monsters above my own level, Alice said while trying to think of future battle strategies. If you want you can go to practice some of your shadow magic in the practice room while I see if we have anyone to come help you out, I'll let them know where to find you once I find someone to help teach you. Sarah said giving a hand gesture in the direction of the practice room I wonder if I can use my shadow movement to go between rooms? I've only used it in open areas so far, Alice pondered before activating her shadow movement. Sinking into her own shadow she spots numerous shadows she can appear out of picking one that looks like it's far enough away to be the practice room she reappears next to a target in the practice room narrowly being missed by a fireball being sent her direction. Shit. Are you okay? Where in the world did you come from I could have killed you? The fire mage said as he rushed over to see if Alice was okay stumbling to a pause noticing how beautiful she is. Yeah, I'm fine, sorry for the scare I used my shadow magic to see if I could move between rooms and I didn't expect anyone to be in here. I'll be sure to be more careful next time. My name is Alice it's nice to meet you. Hello. Alice said waving a hand in front of his face. Oh right sorry my name is Derek I'm a fire mage it's nice to meet you as well, he said slightly blushing. I'm actually here to try to learn fire magic. Do you think you could try to teach me how to use it? Alice said excitedly. Yes, I'd be happy to teach you the basics, Derek said jumping at the opportunity to get closer to Alice and spend some time with her. Fire magic is pretty simple to learn when it comes to the basics, the way my master taught me is by having me sit down closing my eyes and imagining the mana at the tip of my finger heating up slowly. It takes a lot of concentration and it takes a little while to do but with enough practice, you should be able to create a candle-like fire at your fingertip which is pretty useful when you're camped out in the forest. Derek explained. That. Sounds easy enough mind if I give it a shot. Alice asked walking over to a safe part of the room as she sat down. 
Sure I don't mind I'll keep quiet and let you concentrate just ask me if you're having trouble and I'll gladly assist in any way I can. He said as he sat next to her dot crossing her legs and holding a finger out she closed her eyes and tried to imagine the mana in her body being pushed to her fingertip. Feeling the mana at her finger she started to imagine a fire being created at her fingertip. Hotter, hotter, hotter Alice thought in a concentration not losing her train of thought she felt the room warming up as she opened her eyes only to see a rather large fire slightly above her finger. Acting on impulse she flicked her finger which caused the fire to swirl into a ball and launch towards the targets missing the targets in front she just barely hit a target at the back by sheer luck as the target caught fire before gradually dying down. How? It took me months to be able to gather enough fire to light a campfire but you gathered enough to launch an attack in 5 minutes on your first try, Derek said in amazement. I guess I'm pretty gifted when it comes to magic since I have 3 elements altogether. Alice said trying not to brag is she the fucking reincarnation of a legendary hero or something, Derek thought before saying, that's just too amazing, do you know how many high level adventure parties would kill to recruit you to their team, what's your third element, my third element is wind I'm hoping to learn how to use that later on, for now, I just want to increase my damage output so I can fight against higher level monsters better, Alice said truthfully, well, Considering you can now use fireball I don't see that as being much of a problem, how much mana do you have? Since you're level 8 it should be around 60 right? Derek asked curiously. Hmm. Well I have 60 mana left right now but when I'm at full it's a little over 100, Alice said not knowing that having 100 mana at level 8 is just ridiculous. Sigh, I guess I can't be surprised by your mana when you can learn fireball in 5 minutes. So what are your plans now that you learned what you came here for? He questioned. I guess I'm going to take a few more requests and try to level up some more so I can hit D rank status at the Adventures Guild. Having D rank status comes with the perk of a passive income of 1 silver a day at the guild and the ability to be a party leader for E rank dungeons. That sounds like a good idea. Well, come find me once you rank up and we can go challenge a dungeon if you'd like me and some of my friends go every now and again to get better loot. Derek said hopefully thinking about bragging to his friends about being able to spend time with a beauty like this. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Yeah, that sounds like fun I'll be sure to come to look for you later so we can go conquer an E-rank dungeon, CYA later, Alice said waving as she left to go get her armor, shadow, and a few more requests. 12 let us level up shadow. Waking up a little early Alice gets her armor equipped and wakes little Shadow up. Come on Shadow let's go see what kind of requests we can do today, Alice said petting Shadow and waking him up. Jumping off the bed and following behind Alice the two go downstairs hmm, there are 6 rank E requests right now. Subjugate the goblins that are taking a farmer's crops, gather spirit water, gather iron ore from the mine, kill the slime king, capture a goblin alive for research, kill slash capture the thief Nina. Looking over the requests Alice decides to take down, gather spirit water, kill the slime king and capture a goblin alive. Hey, Jess I've got some more requests I'd like to do today, Alice said as she handed the flyers to Jess. Giving yourself a full plate today are you? Jess questioned wondering what level she would come back as today. I've approved your requests but remember to take it easy you've been going pretty hard at things you even came back covered in blood last time. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. Alice said already on her way out the front door with little shadow right behind her dot picking shadow up Alice uses her shadow magic to appear next to Adam again. Without even looking at her he just shakes his hand and waves her away knowing even if he tried to stop her by the time he looked down she would almost be out of sight already dot reaching the forest Alice's takes out the flyer for the slime king to try and find clues about his location and any information related to the request dot request. Kill slime king dot the slime king is hard to miss. It is roughly six times the size of a normal slime and dark red. The king's level is eight and is partially resistant to physical attacks since they mostly just pass through him. It's recommended to use magic to deplete his HP once killed the king should drop slime king's ring. You can find the slime king by entering the forest where slimes are located and traveling deeper into slime territory. Well, that not much of a hint I could have guessed he was around the other slimes. But the drop seems pretty interesting, Alice said as she put shadow down. Think you can keep up Shadow? She asked wanting to see how fast her adorable pet was. Rar Shadow growled out accepting the challenge. Taking off about half speed Alice looked to her side seeing Shadow keeping up with ease so she picked up the pace. 
Pleased to see she could run at almost full speed and Shadow keep up with her the two made it to the slime's territory relatively quickly. Leaving the small slimes for Shadow to deal with so he could work on leveling up Alice finally spots the slime king. Being almost half her height she couldn't help but find the slime kind of creepy looking. Shadow just have fun killing the small slime ill kill the king. She called out to Shadow as she watched him run off to kill more slimes. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Forming a large fireball in her hand she throws it at the slime king putting some power behind her throw trying to increase the damage. Boom. The fireball explodes on impact with the slime king causing it to take burn damage and even roll over a few times. Happy with the firepower behind her attack she launches two more at him not wanting to get any closer to the disgusting monster. Boom. Boom. Catching. Fire the Slime King tries his best to roll over to put out the fire to no avail. Struggling for a few minutes the king caves in on himself dying luckily it only took 3 fireballs I'm starting to run low on MP this skill takes quite a bit of mana to fire off, Alice thought in disappointment at the drain to her MP. Leaping off the tree Alice picks up the drop Slime King's ring plus 10 def, plus 10% resistance to physical damage raising an eyebrow at the second half of the ring's boost Alice wasted no time putting the black ring with a bright red gem. How can something so disgusting looking drop something so pretty? Alice wondered as she noticed her level up name, Alice class, fallen title, hunter HP, 105-105, 130-130, MP, 125-125, 150-150, level, 9 STR, 22 plus 10 VIT, 15 plus 5 int, 20 25 plus 5 DAX, 17, plus 10 plus 5, DAF, 11, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, AGI, 20, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 5-0 putting all her free points into and she could feel her mana pool grow considerably. Feeling happy about the growth she attempts to call out for Shadow when she sees a system quest appear quest reach level 10 reward, plus 50 skill points, class up holy shit, that's quite the reward the skill points alone are enough to make me stay out here till I level up, I wonder what class up means though, Alice said aloud having a new reason to level up even quicker, little. Shadow come back. Alice cupped her hands around her mouth as she shouted. Seeing Shadow run back to her side, she couldn't help but notice that he grew a few inches taller. Well, don't you look a little bit more intimidating? She teased, giving him a head rub, inspecting his level. Little Shadow, level 5 HP 80 slash 80 MP 80 slash 80. Just how many slimes did you kill? Did you get bigger from eating them? Alice questioned with the Slime King killed and plenty of daylight left. Alice and Shadow set out for their next destination capture a goblin alive. Shadow when we reach the goblins I'm going to disarm one and tie him up, you keep the ones close by at bay or eat them for all I care just have fun. Rar. Shadow let out agreeing with the plan of action sounding quite a bit more like a beast rather than a house cat. Taking off at full speed towards the goblin territory Alice was surprised to see Shadow actually passing her up. You little shit don't kill them all before I can catch one. Alice thought to herself slightly annoyed that a level 5 beast was faster than her. Thinking of the grimoire Alice wanted a spell to teleport forward a short distance to close the gap that Shadow was putting between them. Swoosh the pages of the book turned quickly showing her the spell Rift Warp a spell allowing the caster to quickly blink to a location in front of them as long as they can see the spot they want to move towards. Putting the grimoire away she uses her new spell. Instantly disappearing from her spot leaving a black fog that slowly faded away in the direction of the caster. Alice instantly appeared next to Shadow in another puff of black fog. I guess you're not fast enough to beat me just yet little guy, Alice said before blinking further ahead. 13 Spirit Water Spotting a group of 5 goblins Alice lightly swatted one of the goblins with the back of scythe sending the goblin flying back into a tree. Instantly putting her weapon away she launched forward to bring both knees up smashing them into the goblin's shoulders breaking them on contact. Grabbing the now useless goblin and jumping onto a tree limb above her she ties the goblin up and secures him to the tree as she broke his jawbone with a swift punch so he can't call for help. Looking back she sees that little shadow has successfully killed the remaining goblins as she jumps down landing gracefully. Good job shadow all that's left now is to find the spirit water and return with the goblin to collect our reward. Alice said patting his head. Request, gather spirit water. The spirit water can be found to the east of the forest just beyond the goblin territory. The water can be found in a clearing and is protected by a level 9 magical beast. I wish they gave more information about the beast that's guarding the water, she said as she took off to the east at half her speed to give her HP and MP time to recover since she doesn't know how hard the upcoming battle will be. Let's.
Stop here Shadow I can see the clearing and I wanna regain my stamina before we fight him, he is 4 levels higher than you and the same level as me, if you get hurt in the slightest I want you to back off and let me handle things, Alice said sitting down and petting little Shadow as he curled up on her lap taking the opportunity to get loved on and regain his own stamina, no, matter how I look at you you're just an overgrown house cat, Alice said teasingly pulling at a whisker. To which Shadow replied Gra in a low tone as if he was pouting. Dut standing back up and stretching Alice and Shadow once again make their way to the spirit water and the guardian, seeing the beast in the distance a massive grey snake can be seen. Catching his eye the massive snake raises his head, hiss spinning. The sides Alice jumps up using the force of her scythe to carry her higher and holding all of the beast's attention she waits till she starts falling and uses rift warp to instantly appear in front of the snake as she swings as hard as she can cutting the snake's tail from his body. Hiss. The snake lets out a cry of pain before opening his mouth wide and lunges towards Alice only to be knocked off course by Shadow crashing into his head at full speed causing the snake to bite into the ground next to his severed tail. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Good job Shadow, Alice calls out praising Shadow for protecting her as she once again swings her scythe at the body of the snake ripping open the side of his body. Becoming enraged the beast starts slamming his body around violently hitting Shadow sending him flying back towards the forest. Shadow, Alice called out to her dear pet in a panic seeing him hurt. Turning a cold gaze back to the beast she charges up mana in her hands visualizing four fireballs. Seeing four glowing red magic circles form around her while they turn the mana into massive fireballs. HAAA, Alice screams out in anger causing the fireballs to bombard into the beast as she falls to the ground drained. Boom, 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 looking. At the beast with hatred in her eyes she sees the beast lit a fire as it flailed around before collapsing dead. Shadow are you okay? She asks sliding next to Shadow with worry little Shadow level 5 HP 8 slash 80 MP 80 slash 80 with a tear running down her cheek she picks Shadow up holding him close. You can't die on me Shadow you're the only real friend I have, Alice says gently petting Shadow as he sleeps level up quest complete reward plus 50 skill points, class up class up Y slash N yes. As soon as Alice said yes her body started to glow slightly as she could feel small change happen. Name: Alice class, fallen demi angel title, hunter HP. 130-130, 155-155MP, 150-150, 175-175Level, 10STR, 28-10VIT, 20-5INT, 30-5DAX, 20-10-5DEF, 21-5-10-10AGI, 24-5-10Skill Points, 55 Skills, Familiar Telepathy, Blessed by God, Passive, Looking at her new class and status Alice couldn't help but look at it with a dropped jaw that's one hell of a boost all my base stats. Shot up over 20 and I even gained two new skills, familiar telepathy, can communicate with contracted beasts blessed by god, passive, HP and MP regen increased plus 25%, plus 25 extra skill points per level up race, demi angel, a half breed of the angel race that was wiped out not believing what she is reading Alice couldn't help but believe that she really could get her wings back and take revenge with the help of the system. Deciding to wait until they get back to town to allocate her skill points, Alice looks at Shadow's HP again and sighs in relief seeing his HP having gone back up to 20. Picking Shadow up and carrying him to the small pond the beast was guarding she takes out an empty water sack she had and begins to fill the container completing the request. Are you feeling good enough to walk yet little Shadow? Alice asked with concern. I'm feeling good enough to do that at least, Shadow said to Alice. You can speak. Alice was taken back. Looking at Alice and shaking his head, no you can just understand my thoughts now, replied Shadow as he leaped out of her arms. Remembering her new skill she quickly regained composure. Are you sure you're okay? I was really worried you almost died said Alice still unsure. Yes. I'm sure you can always carry me and treat me to some good meat when we get back to reward my hard work. Shadow said making what he wanted to be known without shame. Okay, fine but promise me you won't ever scare me like that again, Alice said as Shadow jumped back into her arms happily, it's a promise, now let's go collect the goblin and go home. Underscore 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 on. Off the goblin at the designated spot and receiving the token of completion Alice and Shadow made their way back to the guild to collect their reward and relax a bit. Hiya.
Jess I'm back and I've finished everything. Alice said trying not to show how tired she is this time. Welcome back just hand me the spirit water, token and your ID card and I'll process everything. Replied Jess. Handing Jess everything she sat on the chair resting her head on the palm of her hand leaning against the table. Took a lot out of you this time huh? Your total reward this time is 225 silver. Jess said. Collecting her money she headed to her room discarding her armor on the floor and falling face first into the bed letting her muscles relax as she faded into sleep. 14 Welcome to the party. I guess it's time to upgrade my status and go update my rank and actually start going to dungeons, Alice thought to herself while cleaning her armor and preparing for the day. Status name, Alice class, fallen demi-angel title, hunter HP, 180-180, 205-205, MP, 250-250, 275-275, level, 10 STR, 2838 plus 10 VIT, 2030 plus 5 int, 3050 plus 5 DAX, 25, plus 10 plus 5, find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting, def, 21, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, agi, 24 34, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 55 0 skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by god, passive, adjusting her stats Alice felt a surge of power enter her body and slowly settle down. Giving myself this much of a boost really feels great, Alice thought with a smirk. Stay. Here for a bit Shadow I'm going to take the test to rank up, I'll be back soon, she said petting Shadow who was laying on the end of her bed. Hiya. Jess is like to rank up, is Matthew available for the test? Alice asked feeling more than ready to take on Matthew. He. Should be here soon, you're welcome to go wait for him in the training room I'll let him know that you're in there when he gets here. Jess said as she continued reading her book underscore 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 and picking a wooden sword and dagger from the weapon rack Alice started thinking of some combos she could use for the pair of weapons she selected. Already, level 10, it's only been a few weeks since you got here. Well seeing how you've already got you weapons let's get started a morning sparring season is always a great way to start the day, Matthew said taking a fighting stance with a smile waiting for Alice to make her move. Giving Matthew a smile she teasingly waved as she sank into a shadow. Where did you go brat? Matthew thought to himself not willing to let the girl get a hit off so soon into the spar. Reappearing from the shadow Matthew cast she lunged her sword towards his back, only to be met with the man grabbing her sword and sending the first flying towards her. Using Rift Warp to blink behind him abandoning her sword she takes the dagger and slices at the back of his neck accurately ending the sparring season. I guess I still underestimated you a bit, it really threw me off with you knowing two shadow spells already, Matthew said gently rubbing the back of his neck. Well I thought about just standing back and setting you on fire, she said as four fireballs appeared around her. No, no no, I would much prefer you not do that, he said waving his hand looking impressed. You can go let Jess know that you passed again, congratulations. Skipping. Out of the training room and up to the reception desk, Alice handed her ID over with a smile. I passed ID like to rank up please. I. Kinda figured you would, I've updated your rank from E to D. With the new rank you can lead dungeon parties for E rank raids and participate in D rank dungeons as long as you find a party that will accept you. Naturally, dungeons are much harder than what you've experienced until now but with that comes a higher payoff in the form of monster drops and various other factors. You can apply to join a party at the dungeon board at the other end of the tavern located inside the guild, Jess said in a slight monotone like she said it hundreds of times before. Thank. You will head to pick up a new weapon before I try and find a party, she said as she headed out the door to go see Yumi. Walking through the business district Alice enters Yumi's shop as an older man is being yelled at and kicked out. Whoa, what happened here? Alice asked as she started browsing the swords. Oh, Alice, I'm so happy to see you, that old man decided he would rather buy a knight with me than any of my wares. Disgusting pig I only have eyes for my adorable Alice, she said hugging her and stepping back. Is there anything I can help you find? I'm just looking to buy a good sword and dagger and anything else I might need for a dungeon, she replied picking up a silver sword. Oh you ranked up to D? That's amazing feel free to ask me if you need any help or find something you want I have to go work on an order I received so it'll be in the back, 
Yumi said before resuming her business. Keeping the silver sword in hand, she picks up a random dagger, deciding to buy them both since they're not her main weapons, just the one she plans to show for now. After buying the rest of what she needed, she headed to the tavern to try and join a party. There are quite a few open spaces in various different parties. It would be nice to be in a small one with a healer. Alice started thinking to herself, trying to decide which one to join. Hey, Alice, you finally ranked up? That's amazing, it only took you a day. We have an open spot in our party if you'd like to join us, Derek said smiling. Turning around to greet Derek, she noticed his friends. A tall hulking man that reminded her of Matthew who must be a tanker class, a short blonde girl that looked like she was no older than 15 sporting a staff with a cross at the top showing she was a healer recognized by the church, and a demi-human with two swords on her right hip. Allow me to introduce you, the tall guy is Seth he is our tank, the girl in the robes is Nira our healer, and the girl with the cat ears is Nikita our main damage dealer, and of course there is me the fire mage but you already know that, Derek said with a light chuckle. So are you willing to join us we have been looking for another damage dealer and you fit the bill with your magic and ability to fight. Matthew even sent us your way vouching for your abilities. Sure, it's nice to meet you all my name is Alice and I'll be in your, from now on, Alice said warmly. So which dungeon do you guys plan on doing? Our plan is to take a dungeon to the west, it's famous for its sheer quantity of monsters it has 5 floors and 3 boss monsters that are level 13, 14 and 15. From what we have been able to gather it'll take roughly 5 days to clear the dungeon depending on how fast we can clear the mob monsters. We are setting out tomorrow first thing in the morning if you want to meet us here tomorrow, Seth said as he outstretched his hand to shake Alice's. Sounds like a good plan I'll see you guys in the morning, Alice replied as she shook Seth's hand. 15 Dungeon Part 1 Making sure all her preparations for the dungeon were complete, Alice stocked some extra food before leaving her room to meet up with the others. Only seeing Seth, Alice walked up sitting beside him at the bar. When are the others going to get here? Alice asked. They should be here soon. I imagine Derek is double and triple checking how he looks right now to try and impress you, Seth said chuckling. While we are chatting, mind telling me how you got your hands on a magical beast? He asked looking at Shadow sitting on her lap. I managed to find him during one of my quests. Some bandits had stolen the egg and I took it from them, she said with a shrug. Does he have any skills yet? Seth questioned, attempting to pet Shadow only to pull his hand back hearing the creature let out a low growl. Be nice, Alice said pulling on Shadow whiskers gently. Not yet. Shadow is only level 7 right now, but he is very useful in a fight and I can communicate with him via telepathy. So if we want to scout out an area without attracting attention, there probably isn't a better kitty for the job. Alice said teasingly hearing Shadow protest being called a lowly kitty. While Alice and Seth were chatting, the rest of the party arrived and began to join in on the conversation. I think it is about time we head out. It will take us roughly four hours to get there on foot. Seth announced, signaling for the party to head out underscore 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 and all right so here is our main course of action since i'm the tank i'll use my aggro skill shout to draw the mob's attention and focus them on me nira i want you to keep an eye on everyone's hp and heal us as needed meaning if we drop below 50 percent hp start healing don't heal us for minor injuries since we will be in the dungeon for around five days nikita i would like it if you could use your flexibility and agility to get behind the mob if possible to attack at weak points alice since you're also a damage dealer and have pretty high agility i would like you to assist nikita and show us the extent of what you can do also because little shadow is a little under leveled i'd like you to instruct him to hang back a little so that he doesn't get injured and die we will use him for recon and that's it during this dungeon. Derek, we have gone through this before a few times, so you already know to stay behind me and to blast away the mob monsters who try to get around me, Seth instructed as we all nodded knowing our roles and what to do now. Let's get going then. And remember, if you get overwhelmed, to shout for help so Nira can heal and buff you if needed until we can save you. Seth reminded everyone. He began leading the way into the dungeon entrance which looked like a door with visible, swirling mana dot following Seth's lead, everyone entered through the doorway, only to be met with an amazing sight. A vast, star-filled night sky with two beautiful moons. They looked so close to them, one might be able to reach out and touch them. Whoa. They all spoke in unison, marveling at the beauty before them. 
Barely having any time to compose themselves, they hear monsters headed their way. Looks like this dungeon is filled with kobolds, said Derek getting his spells ready. Seth runs forward waiting until they're close enough before using his skill shout dot. Huaaa. Seth lets out a deafening roar, pulling the kobold's aggro. Using his gigantic shield, he slams it down causing a shockwave to erupt outwards stunning the kobolds in front of him. Nikita rushes forward stepping off Seth's back and jumping over the group of monsters. She pulls a sword from its sheath, letting out a quick strike, before decapitating one of them. Wow, she seems pretty skillful. Alice thought to herself, not wanting to be left out of the fun. Using Rift Warp, Alice appears behind the group of monsters, taking her sword out stabbing one through the back and killing it instantly. The party makes quick work of the first mob, only taking a few minutes to kill the last of them. Good job everyone, if the rest of the mobs go down smoothly, we will be able to clear the dungeon in no time. Seth praised everyone's hard work with pride in his voice. Let's collect the best weapons they have to sell and leave the rest of the loot. There will be plenty of better drops the further we go. Derek suggested, making a good point. Good idea. Let's head further into the dungeon and try to finish this floor as quick as we can, so we can have some free time to make camp and rest, Alice said, wanting to have some time to admire her surroundings and have a look around quest. Find the kobold's treasure chest reward. Level up. Random skill oh, looks like I can get quests from the system that are even related to dungeons. How convenient. Alice thought to herself, becoming slightly excited to receive her level up and new skill. Continuing their routine, they have a relatively easy time slaying mobs moving from one mob to the next, hardly taking any damage. It was all thanks to Seth's excellent ability to tank the mobs and Nira's timely healing. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Seeing the entrance to the next floor, a huge hole in the ground that seemed to go on without end, Seth suggested them to make camp where they were. Pulling out some of her dried meat, Alice feeds herself and Shadow while everyone conversed among each other. Since we have killed everything on this floor, I want to take the opportunity to explore around this area and admire the beauty of it. You don't see something like this every day you know. Alice says to the others, remembering her system quest. Wandering around aimlessly, Alice had come across a massive lake, wondering why no one noticed it before. Lowering her hands, she soon realizes the water has a very high concentration of mana in it, which gave her the idea to take a bath. She is covered in cobalt blood after all, and she doesn't know when she will get this chance again in the next few days. Do you want to take a bath, Shadow? You've been pretty quiet lately, Alice asked wanting to finally have a moment alone with her most loyal companion. I'd rather just lick myself clean. Thank you, though. Shadow replied, pawing at his reflection in the water. If you say so, keep watch for me because I would absolutely hate for Derek to try to peep at me. Alice said slightly shivering at the thought of having to be stuck in a dungeon with him if he turned out to be a pervert. Duck giving a nod, Shadow wandered off leaving Alice to soak in the lake. Upon getting into the water, Alice instantly started to feel her MP recharge at a rapid pace. This is amazing. I feel so rejuvenated already. It would be nice to take a bath like this every day. I should definitely come back when I'm a higher level to bathe here. Alice said to herself wishing the night would just continue like this Alice, I found a hidden entrance. I have no idea where it leads, but I can feel the presence of a magical beast inside. Shadow said that sounds quite interesting. I'll head your way. Alice replied putting her armor back on ending her bath faster than she wanted. 16 Dungeon Part 2 Sprinting towards Shadow, Alice arrived at the entrance he was referring to. A wooden door with strange carvings that decorated it beautifully, hidden between a grouping of trees. It looked like it opened into the biggest tree at the center. What an odd place for a door to be. I wonder what could even be inside a tree. Alice said to Shadow feeling puzzled. No, other way to find out than to open it. Just be careful, there is the presence of a magical beast, although, it isn't much stronger than I am. Shadow said giving Alice a warning. Even a low-level magic beast can have an attack power many times their level. Putting her hand on the doorknob and slowly pushing the door open, both Alice and Shadow were surprised to see a gigantic room hidden within the tree. The whole room, much to their confusion, was made of smooth creamy marble that was illuminated by a crystal chandelier making the room seem to glow lightly. Peeking further into the massive room without entering, Alice could barely make out a wolf cub at the end of the room. That must be the magic beast you felt. Why is it even in this weird, empty room all alone? Alice questioned almost expecting Shadow to have some idea as to why the wolf was sleeping in the room. I have no idea, but I am pretty confident that I can defeat it. 
Who knows, maybe there will be a good drop for you, Shadow said taking a few steps into the marble room. Letting out a loud growl, Shadow managed to wake the cub from his slumber. Seeing Shadow, the wolf cub jumped up and lowered his head growling, showing he had no plans of backing down from the challenge. Looks like this will be rather fun to watch, Alice thought while sitting down, leaning against the door, having faith in Shadow's words. Let me know if you need my help, we still need you on the other floors, so don't getting hurt too bad. Alice said still slightly worried not wanting to see her precious friend hurt. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Shadow took the initiative to start the battle and ran full speed at the wolf cub. Pouncing and clashing with the wolf, both were sent tumbling backwards. Alice watched on, seeing a near cartoon like scuffle as the two magic beasts rolled around biting and clawing at each other. Moments later the scuffle died down until Shadow was standing over the wolf, victoriously, letting out a roar so loud it hurt Alice's ears. It echoed off the marble walls making the volume feel amplified. I get your happy and good job, but I almost went deaf with that? Alice said proud but slightly annoyed having a ring in her ears. Sorry, but I managed to level up? Being level 8, I am only two levels away from my first skill. Shadow was feeling very proud of himself. In any case, it looks like you grew a little, keep that up and I won't be able to hold you anymore. Alice said, we also need to get back to the group and take a quick nap before we go to the second floor and start battling again. Walking up to the camp, everyone was asleep except Nikita. Hey girl, you're still up? There are no more monsters left on this level, said Alice just now noticing how pretty Nikita actually was. She was a cat girl with black hair, tied up in a ponytail that... She had cute little ears that poked out of her hair, yellow eyes that had the same kind of pupil as Shadow, making her look beautiful yet fierce, and a bust that made Alice slightly jealous. Yeah, I waited up for you. I don't sleep too much inside dungeons. The mana in the air makes my body tingle too much to get solid sleep. You can go on and sleep if you would like to. She replied with an honest smile. I will take you up on that offer. Also, there is a lake further to the east if you would like to take a bath. Good night. Alice said entering her tent and going to sleep underscore 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 on few hours later everyone was awoken to Seth shouting for them to wake up. Sorry to wake everyone up, but we should not sleep for too long. We still have four more floors to complete. We can take a longer rest after we clear the next floor. He said as everyone repacked all their camping gear. Thanks. For the info on the bath. That water felt amazing. Nikita said happy to be clean. They arrived on the second floor only to be met with the same environment as on floor 1 except for it being very bright and sunny, not to mention quite a bit warmer. Nay, -ay -ay -ay? it's so hot I'm going to die. Nikita complained, waving her hand by her face. She received nods of agreement from Nira and Alice. Remember to stay alert Nikita. It may be hot on this floor but you can still really die if you get careless. Seth said with just as much authority as everything else he says. Walking further into the dungeon, more kobolds could be seen wandering around in the distance. They were slightly hunched over and their fur was a lot less thick. Two red stripes starting at their nose and going over their heads and down their back could be seen. Looks like these guys have a high resistance to fire-based attacks, said Derek. He pointed out that the color of their stripes indicates what element they are most resistant to. Let's. Get this over with, Seth said using his shout skill drawing the attention of five of the kobolds. Successfully taking aggro and tanking the five of them, Derek sat back since he was useless on this floor leaving all the damage to Nikita and Alice. Getting behind the group of kobolds, Nikita managed to land a critical strike on one while only inflicting minor damage a second to another. Alice on the other hand used her rift warp to get behind the biggest of the five only to have her attack parried as the kobold punches her hard in the stomach sending her flying back into range of the other mob of kobolds. Giving another shout, Seth gets the aggro of the first mob back in control, not noticing that Alice was sent flying. Being surrounded by kobolds as she stands up, she wipes some blood from the corner of her mouth losing about 45 HP from that one attack. Shit what am I going to do now? Alice thought as she parried attack after attack slowly losing more HP. As her situation looked like it was about to take a deadly end, Alice starts feeling her HP raise slightly faster than the damage she was taking. You have to hold on as long as you can. We can't come to you yet. I will do what I can to heal you, but don't die. Nira yelled, panicking, 
having to heal both Seth and Alice while still trying to defeat the last three kobolds of the first mob. Thankful for her passive HP Regan and the heal she received from Nira, Alice struggled to hold off all the attacks as cuts could be seen opening up on her arms and she was suddenly back to not being able to parry all the attacks being launched her way. Somehow managing to kill one of the kobolds through all her parries and dodging, she lightens her load slightly turning her. Focus on the next monster wishing she had enough time to take out her scythe. Trying to save his master and friend, Shadow leaps into action, landing on the shoulders of the kobold that was attacking Alice from behind. When he began clawing at the monster's eyes, Shadow managed to blind the kobold and leaped onto another set of shoulders doing everything in his power to save Alice from certain death. 17 Dungeon Part 3 Clawing and biting at his second kobold, Shadow failed to blind him. Instead, he was grabbed and thrown into a tree losing half of his HP, deciding that he should rest a bit to recover, so he wouldn't die, he climbed up the tree. Alice, I am sorry that I cannot help anymore. My HP is already at half. Please survive this. Shadow said watching Alice and praying for her safety. Seeing her HP drop to 30% and her movements slowing, Alice shouted starting to panic even more. Heal me please. Just as she was giving up hope, she hears Seth's shout taking the aggro off of her and her HP started to slowly go back up. Taking a much needed moment of rest, she looks at the rest of the party. They managed to finish the first mob and were now able to come to aid Alice and take the mob off her dot with a slight tear in her eyes, Alice yelled out a thank you and dashed to the back of the mob. Attacking them ferociously she began stabbing her dagger in the kobold's neck that was attacking her from behind moments ago, getting a small amount of revenge. Nikita had both of her swords drawn and was attacking beautifully, dealing a massive amount of damage to the kobold in front of her killing him in a short amount of time and moving to the next enemy as Seth managed to maintain aggro. Derek, on the other hand, was firing off as many attacks as he could hoping to help in killing the mob faster, even though the attacks were weak against the kobold mob. After struggling for what felt like an hour, the party managed to kill the last kobold in the mob, giving the exhausted members a chance to catch their breath and recover. How many more mobs are on this floor I wonder? Nikita asked looking off in the distance trying to count. From here, it looks like there are four or five. On the bright side, I leveled up again. I am truly sorry that I was not able to hold all of the aggro and you suffered Alice. Seth said, feeling guilty that his abilities were not enough to keep his newest team member safe causing her to almost lose her life. It's okay. These things happen. I am just happy that we all made it through this. I even managed to level up as well. Alice said while pulling up her status window. Name, Alice class, fallen demi angel title. Hunter HP, 285-285-310-310, MP, 305-305-330-330, Level, 11 STR, 3840-10 VIT, 3040-5 INT, 5060-5 DAX, 2527-10-5, DEF, 21-5-10-10, AGI, 3440-5-10, Skill Points, 30 Skills, Familiar telepathy, blessed by God, passive, once the pleasant feeling of her body started powering up, Alice laid back calling Shadow over, so she could love on her little savior. Thank you for doing what you could for me and keeping your promise. Alice said to Shadow, gaining a nudge to her head feeling his soft fur rub against her face with affection. Good, it seems that we all gained a level except for Derek. Seth said, trying to formulate a better battle plan to prevent something like this from happening again. Not being able to come up with a better plan on the spot, Seth only suggested to Alice and Nikita that they attack and be cautious. If it looks like I am losing aggro, tell me and I'll use shout again. I don't want anyone to lose their lives in this dungeon. Seeing the two damage dealers nod, the party moved on to the next mob. Fighting this mob more effectively, the group began to form a rhythm in their battle fighting and shouting to warn Seth when to use his aggro ability. Fighting mob after mob the party slowly made their way to the end of the dungeon floor without much trouble aside from the occasional kobold trying to attack Alice or Nikita. Most of the time, the pair were able to fend off the attacks since they had a good understanding of the way the kobolds would move, and how they would normally attack after a brief pause of losing aggro. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Nya, yeah, this is exhausting. There are so many mobs on this floor and the last mob looks a little different than the ones we have fought up till now. 
Nikita said stretching and preparing for the last fight on this floor Red Kobold Elder Level 13 Red Kobold Elder Level 12 Red Kobold Elder Level 13 Red Kobold Elder Level 11 Red Kobold Elder Level 12 The Kobold Elders stood a good foot taller than the normal Kobold. Their fur was red with onyx black stripes while they had a menacing glow to their eyes. Most of them carried clubs while the level 13 ones carried large iron axes that looked unimpressive. Okay, our plan remains the same, even though they look a little stronger. We should still be able to kill them with our current plan of attack. Seth said while making sure all his equipment was good to go, he sported a large shield made of steel that had what looked to be a family crest on the front. There was a lion standing over a corpse while letting out a roar and two spears were crossed behind him, as well as having a silver, short sword, much the same as Alice's silver sword. Looking at the party, everyone just nodded to each other knowing it was time to get this floor's last battle started. Rushing forward, Seth used shout gathering their aggro and slamming his shield into the one directly in front of him, causing the elder to fall. This gave Alice and Nikita the opportunity to stab their swords in his chest finishing one of the five early on. Noticing that he is starting to lose aggro as the two damage dealers are attacking without end, he lets out another shout pulling the aggro back to him. He blocked the onslaught of attacks thrown his way. Nira, seeing Seth's HP slowly drop from the force of the attacks, starts to heal him every now and then while keeping an eye on everyone to see who needs healing. Derek on the other hand was trying his luck at using a bow, notching an arrow and aiming for the elders' heads missing miserably. Keep trying Derek, you can do it, shouted Alice, noticing that Derek was trying everything he could to help and not be useless on this floor. As the fight continued, Alice and Nikita managed to deal enough damage to kill three more elders leaving just one more alive. All together now, Seth shouted eagerly wanting to end the battle so they could get some proper rest. Alice and Nikita both let loose a fury of attacks, Alice attacking low and Nikita attacking high in almost perfect unison. During this, Seth would let out another shout as needed to keep the elder's attention on himself. Landing the killing blow, Alice pulled her sword out of the elder's back, swinging it to the side to get the blood to fly off, making a semicircle of blood around the place she stood. Seeing this, Derek couldn't help but to stare at her and admire the war goddess in front of him. Patting Derek's shoulder and leaning in to whisper, girls like that normally only go for guys who are as strong or stronger than they are, so keep on training my friend. Alright, everyone. You all did a great job, now get your tents put up and take yourself a much deserved nap. We head to the third floor in 8 hours, Seth said, pulling out his camping gear and discarding his heavy armor. 18 Dungeon Part 4 Waking up a little before everyone else Alice took the opportunity to study her grimoire, I really need a attack spell or something that will help me out with these mob battles. Alice thought to herself flipping a few pages of the book to explore what she can potentially learn. Turning the pages one by one she eventually came across the spell Shadow Zone. Shadow Zone effect, creates a zone around the caster that slows enemy movement. Reading the skill Alice decides this would be the perfect skill to use in a party attack on mobs. Not only will it not slow her party it has just enough range to slow all the monsters Seth is tanking, which may even make things easier on Seth. The only downside is the skill is less effective if the monster is a higher level than her. On the other hand if the monster is two or more levels below her the skill gains plus 25% effectiveness. Feeling pleased with her new spell Alice wakes little Shadow up from his nap, it's time to wake up and get the next floor started Shadow. Packing. Up her tent the other party members start to wake up and do the same. I hope you all got some good rest the next floor will have less mobs but there is also a boss monster, Seth said standing up and stretching after getting his camping gear packed. I just hope this floor is not resistant to my fire magic, Derek said letting his head sink a little remembering how useless he was on this floor. I am sure you will be able to help us on the third floor Derek don't be so down, said Nira trying to cheer him up. All right. Enough standing around let's get things going it's already been two days and I want to try to get thing done sooner my daughter's birthday is coming up, Seth said leading the group into the next floor. Shielding their eyes from the blinding light with their hands, the group is finally able to see what the floor looks like. Oh wow, said Seth, slightly shocked at the layout of the floor. The floor had a bright sun in the clear blue sky, tree were all around and the party could hear the sounds of a beach in the distance they couldn't see any monsters yet because of cover from the trees but the floor was beautiful. Off on the other side of the forest a black brick building that towered over the trees could be seen. That tower must be where the floor boss is, Seth said stating the obvious. Heading into the forest the group keeps their eyes open as the look around taking the time to admire the foreign plants and bugs, there were neon flowers that lined the forest ground everywhere and some bugs the size of Alice's hand. 
Luckily for the team no one was scared of the critters or it would mean they could potentially be distracted in battle. Hey, Derek it looks like it is your lucky day, the kobolds on this floor have green stripes, said Seth looking at Derek with a grin. Time to shine? Alice just sit back and watch me kick all these kobolds asses for you, Derek said getting pumped up thinking of impressing Alice with his fire attacks. I can use fire magic too, Alice said with a straight face knowing she was crushing whatever fantasy he was living out in his head. Don't go crushing his spirit now Alice, Nikita said laughing lightly as she patted Derek on the back. Oh, leave the rest to us Alice and I will be a perfect duo launching fire wherever enemies may be, they will flee in fear when they see this unstoppable duo, Derek said bouncing back almost instantly putting an arm around Alice. Sinking into his shadow she comes back out from a tree next to Nikita. Okay, enough playing around you two let's get going since they are weak to fire Alice you can continue to attack from the back and make use of your magic from there. Derek you get in your normal position, Nira, and Nikita you know what to do. Seth said moving the party along. Firing off fireballs one after the other Derek made surprisingly quick work of the green striped kobolds as the party went from one mob to the next. The only issue with progress was traversing the wooded area and trying to find the next mob. It would normally take the group roughly 30 minutes before they would find another mob to attack between each battle. Let's. Head towards the beach I really want to have some relaxing fun this is just boring and I am covered in sweat, Nira said wiping her face off with the sleeve of her robe. I guess that we may as well look for mobs in that direction as well, we can just head to the tower after we have some fun, Seth said agreeing with Nira since he too was drenched in sweat. Making good time as they head to the sounds of the beach the group only encountered 4 mobs along the way. Alice wanting to play at the beach would charge up five fireballs and launch them at whatever mob she saw as soon as she saw them almost killing them on the spot making their travels much faster. Derek on the other hand would try his best to launch attacks as fast as he could to keep up with Alice but would only hit one at a time dealing the rest of the damage needed to kill the kobolds. Arriving at the beach the team was surprised to a massive ocean and white sand beach in front of them. They knew there would be a beach they just did not expect a beautiful one where the sand was hot and the water was crystal clear allowing you to see the ground no matter how deep you went in underscore 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 Okay since it's very likely the floor boss is weak to fire I want Alice to stand back and make use of your fire magic with Derek to try to lower his HP quicker that was we can enter the tower and find his loot, Seth said explaining the battle strategy to everyone. Getting nods of understanding from everyone they came into view of the boss standing in front of the entrance to the tower Kobold Lord level 13, boss HP 21,000 slash 21,000 MP 9,000 slash 9,000 letting out a slight whistle the group took a moment to examine the boss for any potential weakness. He stood at a good 7 feet tall, had large red eyes, light silver fur with only one white stripe. His weapon was two shiny looking scimitars one in each hand. Looks like he has no resistance to fire thankfully but his HP on the other hand is outrageous. Seth said slightly jealous at the sheer amount of HP a level 13 boss has. Let's go, Seth said as they all ran into position surrounding the boss quickly. Using his skill shout Seth attracted his attention as Alice and Derek both charged up multiple fireballs to launch. Nikita launched a fury of attacks at the back of the kobolds trying to limit his movement as Seth used shield bash to stun the boss. Now, Seth shouted signaling to Alice and Derek to launch their attacks. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates. Better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Boom, boom, boom boom, 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 boom. The fireballs launched at the boss all collided with his head and torso causing the boss to take a step back. Kobold Lord level 13, boss HP 16,000 slash 21,000 MP 9,000 slash 9000 using shout again to ensure the boss didn't take his eyes off of himself Seth put his shield up blocking the onslaught of attacks the boss unleashed in a fit of rage. Nira not letting Seth's HP drop below 70% continued to heal him as Nikita stabbed both of her swords into the boss's leg right behind his knee causing the boss to stumble down onto that knee. Using one of his swords to help keep himself standing the boss used the other sword to swing with all his power crashing into Seth's shield sending Seth flying back a few feet and damaging his HP greatly. Nira jumping into action used her skill mass heal to quickly restore Seth to full HP.
The downside to her using this skill is it can only be used once a day so if they end up in a dire situation again Seth may die. Nikita seeing a bright orange glow from the other side of the monster saw that. Alice had both of her hands raised above her head fusing the five fireballs she had into one massive fireball. Knowing what Alice planned on doing Nikita ran and picked up Nira jumping further away as she yelled run. To Seth. Using shield bash one last time Seth quickly ran out of the way of Alice's attack yelling for her to attack letting her know he was safely out of the way. Moving her hands towards the boss the massive fireball that scorched the ground it passed over flew at the boss hitting him in the chest before he could move away. Boom the massive explosion of fire sent a small shockwave out and setting the nearby grass and flowers ablaze. Falling to the ground having completely drained her mana Alice panted and drank some water before passing out. 19 Dungeon Part 5 Waking up in her tent still feeling a little sick Alice looks around to see Shadow laying down resting his head on her stomach. You awake? She asked petting him from his head to his tail. Yeah, it seems like you've recovered enough to regain consciousness, Shadow replied letting out a low purr. What happened I remember taking a drink and then next thing I knew I am waking up in my tent. She asked curiously. You drained all of your mana for one attack, thankfully it wasn't in vain as you managed to kill the boss. Shadow said rolling over to face his master, looks, like I leveled up again from killing him I should feel better once I edit my status, she said pulling up her status window. Name: Alice class, fallen demi angel title, hunter hp, 390-390, 415-415, mp, 410-410, 435-435, level, 12 str, 4045-10 plus vit, 4050-5 plus int, 60 70 plus 5 dex, 27, plus 10 plus 5, def, 21 26, plus 5 plus 10 plus 10, agi, 40, plus 5 plus 10, skill points, 30 zero skills, familiar telepathy, blessed by god, passive, yet there is nothing like the feeling of leveling up, I feel 100% now, what about everyone else, Alice asked as she got up to exit the tent, Alice, you're okay, Nira and Derek said in unison, yeah, I am fine now I just needed some rest after that attack. Alice said brushing off their enthusiasm as she joined the party by the entrance to the tower. We decided to wait for you to enter the tower to see what loot we can find, seeing how we owe this victory to you, said Seth as he handed her some dried meat. Thank you, shall we go in? I can imagine Derek is probably losing his mind waiting to see what loot he can get his hands on, Alice said jokingly on K. Derek rushed to the door and swung it open revealing a black stone interior with a few doors and a metal spiral staircase leading up the tower. Shadow run upstairs ahead of us and see if you can't locate a chest I need it for a system quest, Alice asked Shadow using her telepathy so the others wouldn't hear. Without answering Shadow sneakily made his way up the stairs searching for the chest. Walking over to one of the doors Alice opens it and to her surprise sees the room has weapons much like the ones the boss used. Storing two of the scimitars Alice called out to the rest to let them know of the weapons rooms as she continued her search of another room only to find nothing Alice I found a chest, it is pretty big and had golden trim it might be what you're looking for, Shadow communicated with Alice. Hearing this Alice used her shadow movement spell to appear from a shadow located in the room little shadow was in Cobalt's treasure chest good job, Alice said praising shadow. Walking up to the chest Alice lifts the top open lifting a brow seeing a ornament that attaches to weapons. Weapon ornaments are usually pretty rare because they can give your weapon unique attributes. This is some treasure for it to be in a low-level dungeon, Alice said reaching in and taking the item storing it for later weapon ornament of the Kobold King when attached to a weapon gives the a random attribute depending on the user's specialty quest, find the Kobold's treasure chest reward, level up, random skill skill, demonic gaze, a simple look using this skill can cause your enemy to be tempted to flee, oh, that is pretty useful and I even managed to gain another. Level, Alice said deciding to hold off on leveling until a little later as to not cause suspicion from the rest of the party. Joining the rest of the group again Alice decide to try her new skill out on Derek for fun, looking at Alice he suddenly feels a sense of danger coming from Alice as he steps back and shallows his spit trying not to scream. To Derek what he saw when he met her eyes was a demon who would eventually devour him. Hey Alice, are you by chance angry? Derek said with a slight stutter. Sorry. No I learned a new skill with my level up and I decided to try it out on you to see how effective it was, Alice said apologizing. Well, don't use skills on teammates unless it's a buff Alice he is clearly scared of you now, Seth said slightly annoyed she would go that far for a joke. In any case we should head down to the fourth floor we all managed to level up again and we are making good progress. 
he said leading the way as the rest of the party followed underscore 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 on the new floor Alice was happy to see it resembled the first floor having a clear night sky full of stars and two huge moons. She found this scenery perfect and calming and the temperature was just right making her feel like she could go on fighting endlessly without breaking a sweat. Shadow, go look around and tell me what kind of kobolds are around, it'll be good to know beforehand. Alice instructed Shadow as she walked over to Derek slightly bowing, I really am sorry I had no idea what would happen with my skill, I just knew it wouldn't hurt you. It's fine honestly speaking I was so scared I wanted to run away but thinking back on you it also gave you a glow of untouchable beauty so I wouldn't mind seeing the skill again, who knows maybe I'll gain some tolerance to those kinds of skill. Derek said making a joke. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Oh really now, maybe I should use the skill again and see how long you can last Mr. Flirt, Alice said with a smirk waiting for him to take the bait. Okay you two let's not get too comfortable we are in a dungeon after all, Nikita said trying to save Derek from himself. Alice the kobolds on this floor are resistant to wind magic, other than that they seem to travel in mobs of six. There are also less mobs than the previous floor the boss is probably quite a bit stronger, Shadow reported back to Alice. Duck conveying Shadow's message to the group they decided to with their previous plan of attack. Getting into their positions they moved towards their first mob of the floor attacking with the same strategy as before with just as much effectiveness. The enemy may be a bit stronger but so were they, finishing their first mob and moving to the next deeper into the floor they could start to see a glow just beyond the trees. Slaying mob after mob making good progress the party made it to a clearing where they say a huge bonfire with a kobold sitting on a makeshift throne kobold king level 14 boss hb 28,000 slash 28,000 mp 12,000 slash 12,000 skill quake the kobold king stood at a astounding 8 feet tall having jet black fur and no stripes Instead he had small horns creating a little crown on his head and glowing yellow eyes, while wielding a claymore. Damn. Looks like this boss has a skill and a crowd control one at that, Seth said clearly annoyed. For tanks crowd control skills that can knock them down can spell death in combat. He would suggest everyone turn around and leave the dungeon if it wasn't for Nira being a top tier healer even as a low level. Taking his stance Seth charges forward using his shout and shied bash in succession, Nikita and Alice rush to opposite sides of the king and swing at his ankles hoping to disable the king from the start. Unfortunately the king's hide is too thick and the attacks only leave minor wounds dropping his HP by only 800. Launching three fireballs at the boss hitting him in the chest and head Derek grins gaining a person best for his magic attack. Blocking attack after attack and using shout as often as needed Seth stands strong as he tanks all of the damage being sent his direction. Alice try to use some of your magic just don't overdo it this time. Seth shouted out hoping that she could deal a chunk of his HP and make things a little easier. Jumping back a little Alice raised both hands above her head as a magic circle formed and grew larger and larger until it was slightly smaller than the one she used on the previous boss. Nikita seeing Alice's attack charged up dashes to the side a few times to avoid any collateral damage. Boom, Alice's attack crashes into the king's back dropping his HP by 12,000 leaving him with just under 13,000. Jumping back into action Alice stabs her sword into the back of the kobold causing the king to become enraged. The king took a step closer to Seth and let out a deafening roar as it took its claymore and swung it wildly crashing into Seth's shield sending him flying into Nira. Getting the king's aggro Alice uses her shadow zone spell and slow the king down slightly trying to give Nira and Seth time to recover as she puts just enough distance between the boss for it to miss its attacks. Rushing back into action after receiving a heal as well as a stamina buff from Nira. Seth uses shout gaining aggro from Alice again. Good job stalling him Alice, do you think you can join Derek and use some magic for now? Nikita and I will do the physical damage for now. Seth asked wanting Alice to assist Derek. Derek. I have been curious but is there a way for us to combine out fire attacks? Alice asked urgently trying to think of a way to deal as much damage as possible. We might be able to boost the attack power of one of our attacks if one of you's channels our MP into the other. Derek said slightly surprised by the suggestion. I will channel my remaining MP to you and you can fire off an attack I'll leave just enough MP for myself that I don't paw out again but I will leave the rest to you after that, 
Alice said standing behind Derek placing her hands on his back and pushing her MP into him. Blushing slightly Derek start charging up the biggest fire attack he has with the assistance of Alice's MP Hellfire come to my aid and burn thy enemy to ash, take my MP as a sacrifice and burn the enemy till nothing remains, Derek chanted in the language of magic arts as a very complex looking magic circles appeared in front of him glowing a deep red as a single small fire shot towards the king hitting him continually in the chest draining his HP at a rapid pace. Moments later the king struggled flailing around trying his hardest to put out the fire that was burning him alive. Failing to put it out the king went down to his knees and fell down with a loud thud as his body continued to burn away. That is one hell of an attack why didn't you use that attack sooner? Alice and Nikita both questioned. Well, that attack requires 125 MP to fire off and I only have 58 MP, thanks to Alice channeling her MP into me I was able to use the spell, Derek said scratching the back of his head with a smile feeling proud that he was the one to finish the boss off even though he needed Alice's mana to do so. Well, thankfully we killed him when we did, I am not sure how much longer my shield will hold up, Seth said looking at his beaten shield. Well on the bright side after this dungeon you should have plenty enough money to buy a great shield, said Nira as she checked on Seth to see if he had any injuries. Let's take a rest and get ready for the last floor, hopefully my shield will hold up for the last battle. If it breaks we will have to retreat and give up on the dungeon and restart after a few days, Seth said praying his equipment holds up. 20 Dungeon Part 6 Approaching the last floor the temperature began to drop slowly the further down the party descended. Fuck, why is it so good on this floor? Nira said shivering and rubbing her hands together. Shadow, go ahead of us and scout the floor out some, since it is so cold on this floor we may have an advantage having two fire mages. Alice asked giving Shadow a pat on the head as he ran off. We should stay behind a little till your magic beast returns with a report, Nikita said standing closer to Derek who conjured up a fire in his hands. After a few moments of the group standing around the fires Alice and Derek made to stay warm Shadow returns with a slight limp. The kobolds on this floor only travel in groups of three but they have blue and red stripes. They also seem to be quite a bit smarter as they sneaked up to attack me while I was trying to scout further into the floor to get a look at the boss. Shadow conveyed his report to Alice. Letting the others know of his findings, the party decided it was best for Alice to rejoin Nikita as a damage dealer. With everyone on the same page, Seth led the party out into the floor. The floor consisted of a dark, cloudy sky, lightly light by a single red moon that gave the, the forest in front of them a eerie feel to it. Quietly making their way through the forest, keeping an eye out for any mobs trying to sneak up on them, the group encountered the first mob. The kobolds had white fur, blue and red stripes, and carried axes. Just as Shadow said the first mob only consisted of three kobolds which gave the party a slight amount of relief. Rushing forward and using both shout and shield bash Seth gained aggro and stunned all three of the kobolds as Nikita and Alice sprinted forward striking the kobolds with efficiency landing critical hits while they were stunned leaving just one to take care of. Making very short work of the mob Seth couldn't help but feel relieved as the less stress puts on his equipment right. Now the better chance they will stand against the boss later on. Good job everyone let's keep this up so we can fight the boss without damaging my already damaged equipment. Seth said moving deeper into the forest. Slaying mob after mob the group took a moment to rest again as battling in this climate was taking its toll on them. I think I am going to use my shadow skills to get a better look at the boss, Alice said running off without giving them time to protest shadow stay with them and let me know if anything happens that requires me to return, Alice said to shadow leaping from treetop to treetop making her way to the end of the forest. Understood, Shadow said giving a simple reply. Reaching the edge of the forest without much effort Alice was able to see the boss kobold queen level 15 boss HP 32,000 slash 32,000 MP 17,000 slash 17,000 skill. Blizzard the queen had a crown of horns much like the king while she stood a little shorter and had snow white fur and no stripes causing her to almost blend in with the background if not for the fact that she wielded a large club and sat on a throne. She might be a pain in the ass for Seth to tank and the rest of us to fight with her skill and weapon, Alice thought to herself heading back to join the party again underscore 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 on everyone know of her findings on the boss they still set their sights on defeating her and finishing the dungeon. Well only thing left to do is keep moving forward, so let's get going.
Seth said once again leading the party forward. Fighting against Mob after Mob the party struggles a little bit as the temperature drops even more the closer they get to the queen until they reach the edge of the forest and see her sitting on her throne. Watching as the queen slowly stands up giving the group a glaze showing she is ready for battle they waste no time in rushing towards the queen. Before Seth can even use his skills the queen swings her club slamming it into Seth's shield. Bam, Seth slides back a few feet taking her blow, taking the opportunity Seth recovers and runs forward using shout causing the queen to face Seth once again abandoning her attempt to attack Nikita who was preparing for the worst. Alice let loose a fury of attacks trying to take as much of the queen's HP as possible took a second to peak the queen's HP causing her to curse under her breath seeing that the queen has only lost 1000 HP, Shadow. Zone Alice said activating her skill causing the queen to move only slightly slower. Nero was continuously using heal on Seth to keep him in the battle which earned his eternal thanks as the queen hit hard taking 18% of his HP with every strike. Derek tried his hardest to assist in the battle throwing fireball after fireball at the queen which didn't do much other than annoy her. Lucky for Derek the queen was drawn towards Seth as he kept using his shout every time she looked away. Growing increasingly annoyed with the puny humans that could only take a few hundred HP off her every 30 seconds, decided to unleash her skill. Gray. The queen shouted as the wind and snow started picking up drastically, she used her skill be careful. Alice shouted trying to attack the queen as best she could in the blizzard forming around them. Taking a hit to the ribs while trying to shield his eyes from the freezing wind Seth spat out blood as he is sent flying into the forest. Abandoning her station as everyone's healer, Nira ran off into the forest after Seth to make sure he was not dead. Happy to be free of Seth's skill the queen poured more of her mana into the blizzard causing it to swirl in a frenzy. Nikita not wanting to be hit by the snow and wind that felt like daggers piercing her skin ran off after Nira. No longer able to see anyone in the party due to the blizzard, Alice put her sliver sword away and took out her scythe. If you want to play like this then allow this angel to play with you, Alice said as she activated her shadow zone again. If she had to move slower so to should the queen. Spotting the queen Alice spun her scythe and leaped into the air using the wind of the blizzard to carry her closer as she swung as hard as she can landing a hit as her blade sunk into the queen's back. Kicking herself off the boss Alice lands in the snow as her opponent rushes at her and swings its club hitting Alice in the leg as she tries to jump out of the way underscore 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 Seth are you okay? Nira said worriedly as she placed her hands on Seth healing him to the best of her ability. Bear cough cough cough. Seth tries to answer coughing up some blood into his hands. Nikita, Derek where is Alice? Is she okay? Seth asked panicking at the idea she died from his incapability to properly tank the boss. I thought she was following us, said Derek with a worried look starting to show on his face as he thought of he solo fighting the boss in the middle of the blizzard. We need to hurry if she dies I don't think I will be able to live with myself, Seth said standing weakly as he started walking back out of the forest trying to see through the blizzard. Seth. Stop I haven't fully healed you yet if you go out there right now Alice won't be the only one to die? Nira shouted in anger with a tear in her eyes. Not to be harsh but hurry up and finish I refuse to let anyone in this party die, Seth said bluntly. So, you would rather us all die than just one of us? I get it we had a lot of fun being with Alice, she is a great team member and is strong, but can you really be sure we can kill the queen if we go back in there? Your shield is already falling apart and we can barely move in the blizzard not to mention Derek can't cast any of his magic in that. Nikita said trying to talk reason with Seth as she bit her lip regretting that she couldn't go assist Alice and save her but rather suggested they leave her to die. Find authorized novels in web novel faster updates, better experience please click www.webnovel.com for visiting. Why you rewrite but that doesn't change the fact I am going to help her dot stay here if you would like but I am going to help her the same way I would if it was any of you out there underscore 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 unrift warp Alice dodges all the queen's attacks in the nick of time landing a few blows herself here and there. Fucking queen. I am going to show you who the real queen is here and fucking make you bow down to me, Alice said in anger as she tried to plan out her movements in the middle of battle. Rift warping in front of the queen, Alice pours half of her MP into her skill and uses demonic gaze as she locks eyes with the queen. Looking into Alice's eyes the queen stops in her tracks and the blizzard starts to die down a little giving Alice the chance she needs. 
Rushing forward using Rift Warp Alice appears closer to the queen in the blink of an eye swinging her scythe as hard as she can severing one of the queen's legs from her body just below the knee and dealing a massive chunk of her HP Kobold Queen level 15 boss, weakened, HP 8,000-32,000 MP 3,500-17,000 skill, Blizzard who looks like this battle won't go on much longer Miss Queen, it is about time you bow before me, Alice said as she warped in front of the queen's other leg swinging her scythe. Again dot jumping back and falling to the ground the queen struggles to get up from dodging Alice's attack. I am going to take your other leg as well unless you submit to me Miss Queen. I promise to make your death quick if you can do that, Alice said as she used demonic gaze again trying to intimidate the boss in its weakened state. Walking with a limp to the boss Alice is surprised to see that the queen seemed to understand her taunts and started to prostrate before Alice causing her to stop her movements wondering what the hell is going on. Haha <laughs> since I am an benevolent queen I shall keep my word and give you a quick death. Alice said with a sadistic smile having a boss bow to her dot just as Alice got close and raised her side the queen punched Alice hard in the stomach causing Alice to fly back rolling to a stop half buried in the snow leaving Alice with only 65 HP left. You dare hit me you filthy overgrown dog, Alice said weakly trying to get up dot standing back up facing the now standing queen, Alice uses her rift warp skill to appear next to the queen sinking the blade into the queen's shoulder and retreating away having no MP or HP left to fight. If only I had more MP you would be long dead right now, Alice said as she tried to flee into the forest to give her HP and MP time to regenerate with her passive. Alice, you're alive? Seth said as he rushed to her helping her stand. Where did you even get such a evil looking weapon? Seth questioned as he looked at the small girl holding such a huge weapon. Don't worry about that right now, whereas Nira the queen is almost dead. Alice asked looking around for Nira to heal her. Nira is taking some time to gather her mana back she drained herself bringing me back from death's door. Seth said not wanting to tell her they wanted to leave her for dead. Whatever, my MP has recovered enough to let me fight a little longer I just needed a small break, Alice said as she limped back towards the queen that was using her club to give chase to Alice. Let me help you at the very last, Seth said running in front of her.